Hello and welcome to the Afrika TV StarCraft League Season 17, done in partnership with Well New Life Prestige Gaming Chairs ahead of Group E of the Round of 24. Yesterday, once again, we had our first and second tier players moving on to the Round of 16, with JYJ and Shuttle landing safely in the next round. With both having had championship runs in the ASL, the competition in the Round of 16 is already sure to be quite heated. Let's now have a word with the four contestants of Group E. Hello. Let's start with Snow. You had a rather speedy exit last season ending the tournament in the round of 24 and are now returning to the studio after some downtime. I heard you contracted uh, Corona last week and I'm wondering if you've managed to recover yet. How are you feeling? I'm fine generally. I do have a bit of a cough still but it's all good now. Some good news there as well because you've just had your second child. Congratulations! Yes, thank you. So that's another member of the family to cheer you on here. Has that given you an extra boost this season? Yeah, looking at things realist uh, realistically, I need the money. Uh, so I'll have to get far and get that prize money. Well, no better motivator than that. Let's now turn to speed. We haven't met here at the studio in a really long time, have we? Yeah, I haven't been here in a while. I didn't think I would be nervous, but a little anxiety is creeping in. What have you been up to then? I've been focused not just on my games, but my students' progress as well. Still, somehow, I managed to pierce through the qualifiers and I'm back, to, uh, back after a long spell. It's come to my attention you've had some back problems recently. Is that going to be an issue today when you're playing? I've gained a few pounds and it's putting a strain on my back. Nonetheless, I don't think it'll come into play today. I should do well. Looking forward to it. Time to talk to Mong. I've heard you've changed your night and day schedule recently. So you had to wake up early today to get to the studio? I wonder how you're holding up. No, I'm fine. This fits right into my regular schedule. So this is your 17th time qualifying for the ASL. You played in the, in the round of 24 of every single season barring season 10. I'm getting a feeling this means you know what to do to prepare to play in the round of 24 specifically. I'm a little ashamed by the fact that I keep getting knocked out. Because I always get to the round of 24 but I haven't had a chance to go to the group selection ceremony in donkey's years. I forgot how to play to advance it seems. I came with a relaxed mindset today. But I can't really say how the games are going to go. But the confidence you've always had, is it still there? Sure, sure it's there. Good to hear, let's turn to Shine now. You're coming back to the studio having skipped last season altogether. Why have you been up to? Well, I failed to get through the qualifiers last season and felt dis distressed afterwards. Having qualified this time, I think I'll have to make up for my past shortcomings. I wanted to ask you about today's group. I had a look at your run in season 3 where you took second place. And in that season, you beat both Snow and Mong. Yeah, I remember beating them when I was doing really well, so I do have some confidence, but in all honesty, especially when it comes to Mong, I'm really glad to be meeting him here at the studio. Just seeing his name in the bracket, oh, it's so heartwarming for us to be meeting here. You're both chuckling to yourselves. I wonder, Mong, are you as happy to see Shine as he is to see you? <laughs> I've lost to Shine a lot in tournaments, so rather than being glad to see him, let's say I'll treat this as a chance for revenge. Mong wants to give Shine a taste of his own medicine. Let's now have a look at the highlight points starting with Snow. Looking at your online results, you have an aura of being a championship contender at some point, so seeing how well you're performing online, it has to be somewhat disheartening when you're not able to perform as well in the ASL. In turn, that must be motivating you to overcome this disparity in online and off offline games more than anyone, or is it rather burdensome? 
I knew I had to relax a little, but I just couldn't do it. I'm confident, but anytime I actually get to playing, it ends up a damp squib. So today, uh, I'll try to relax and just trust my hands. Looking forward to seeing what you bring to the table then. Time for Mong. Your first game today is against Shine, who seemingly has a reason to be happy about it. You met him in the round of 16 of season 14, and then the round of 24 of season 15. And both times you ended getting the short end of the stick. You've said yourself you want to take revenge today. Do you have any good timings ready for this DVZ? So what happened back then is he kept gaslighting me with his bag of builds. I was so scared. But time has passed. Oh, I've been able to observe him and I've opened my eyes. I won't fall for it again. It's all a thing of the past then and Shine has run out of tricks. Well, let's see what Shine thinks about that. Your win rate in ZVP is a 64.3%, however, your ZVT is only at a 37.9% win rate. That's quite the disparity. You'll be meeting both Protoss and Terran today. Which matchup did you focus on? My ZVT is only 37.9%, but 30% of that is me beating Mong. So I can advance today just beating Mong twice. Oh, that's what's bumping your ZVT up? Yeah, that's why I'm so happy to see him here, as I've just mentioned. But Mong's, Mong is saying there's nothing else you could pull out of your bag of builds. How do you feel about that? I've been feeling rather exhausted lately. It's just, when I play Mong, instead of relying on my bag of builds, I guess I just mix in timings and it seems to be working. So I came with a relaxed mindset. I look forward to seeing you two have at it. Let's have a word with speed to close things out. You're returning to the ASL after six long seasons with your last showing in ASL 11. Looking back at the group you had in the round of 24 back then, I heard it was quite challenging. Best, action, JYJ, all distinguished players. You must still remember how difficult it was. How did you feel seeing the group you would be in this season? I think Snow will advance in first place. And then I'll, it, it'll be a fight for the second place. Oh, Snow is going to make it through quickly and then you're looking to win uh, the elimination match. This is the most realistic expectation, I think. And who do you expect to meet in the elimination match if you get there yourself? Shine or Mong? Oh, hard to tell. Whoever it is, I think I have a chance. Whether it's TVZ or TVT makes no difference to you? No difference. All of our four players are going into today with a certain deal of confidence. Let's hear some closing remarks then. Mong? I hope the practice I put in is enough to, uh, to guarantee a good result today. I'll show some good games. Ernest hopes to advance from Mong. Snow? I too. Really. Really. Really hope to make it through today. Both messages full of hope. Speed? I'll show good games. Shine? This is my first time in the ASL since joining SC University Poshinde. And recently we've been having a hard time, so I'll get a good result today to lift everybody up. Looking forward to it. Can't wait to see some good games from all of you. Thanks for the interview. That does it for our pre-game interview with the four players of Group E. Let's kick things off and see which of our competitors will be joining the round of 16 roster. What's up everybody? We're back here for another day of the ASL. This is Group E. Uh, I gotta say this season has been fantastic so far. We've had a lot of ups and downs here. Um, and right now we are in our hotel room, mm -hmm. well your hotel room, yeah. in Los Angeles still. 
That's right. Uh, we are filming basically everything here because we are in California for a few days. Yeah, so some uh, Yeah, sorry if this was uploaded like a day late or whatever from what you expected. But we had some travel, and unfortunately, these overlap. But yeah, we're getting to do it together, yeah. which is a lot of fun. You might notice the audio is just a little bit different. I mentioned that before. Uh, we're doing our best with a mobile setup, but I think it sounds pretty good. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's really fun, though, to just be sitting next to you casting once again. This is a nice change. This yeah. is, I can actually see you. I know when it's uh, my turn to talk or when you've got another yeah. point to make. Um, so Sorry, you're breaking fun. up, Tasteless. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's good to be down here doing ASL. This is kind of an unusual situation doing it here live. Um, but so far, all the groups have been great. I think today is going to be no exception. Oh, I actually really like today's group. Yeah. I really, really do. It's like Snow, who might be the best player in the world right now. Uh, and then we have, uh, you know, Shine, who's always, always fun and amazing. And then two kind of mid-tierish Darrens. Uh, and that's that's gonna make it really fun, I think. You know, uh, Speed and Mong are well. I'll talk more about them as we get into it. Of course, you do see that Group F is gonna be coming as well. Royal Beast, Rain, and Barracks over there. That's a that's a pretty fun one. I hope that Rain is in good shape. This yeah, season. it's funny. I really want to see Rain do well. I feel like when Rain is playing well, he does look like the best player in the whole world. Yeah, he seems oh, to I have agree. this like really good handle on the game. But uh, Rain has proven to be less consistent than before. There was a period where Rain seemed to just play perfectly and win everything. Yeah. Um, he, of course, had that real big failure in the ASL Finals a couple That's years true. back, and That's I think true. he hasn't quite found his groove since then. Um, anyways, as far as Protoss is today, we've got Snow. I think he's easily the guy that gets out first. Um, but as far as the other three players here, I think Shine's got a good shot, because Mong and yeah. Speed could absolutely take it. It's, it's very true. And in fact, all three of these players are extremely good against Protoss. And I think that that makes it kind of dangerous. It's best of one. I know Snow is amazing, but you can't win every single game. So I think there is a lot of upset potential. Obviously, you know, Shine brings a lot of cheesy, aggressive builds that trick people. Speed is actually kind of like that for Terran. He has a lot of cheesy, super aggressive builds that he pulls out yeah. uh, in the various matchups. So there's like a lot of upset potential here for our tier three and tier four players. And also, by the way, I think we've had almost all of tier one and tier two players make it through so far. Yeah. So that system has done well, but I do value Shine a bit higher than Mong in my opinion. Sometimes when I see the ranking things of the tiers, I kind of don't like it because I think yeah. it, it undersells how good the players are and what yeah. their potential is. But um, certainly Snow is, is a step ahead of everybody here. Yes. I think putting him at tier one, I'm like, yeah, that sounds about right. Um, Snow, you know, uh, maybe five, six years ago was the de facto greatest PvT player of all time. I mean, it yeah. was pretty crazy. Um, and the issue was like, well, can he hang PvZ? He's obviously good at those matchups. He's good at PvP. He seems to have completed the like greatest player portfolio or whatever yeah. you want to call it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. His play is phenomenal. Obviously, it's best of ones today, so anything can happen. But yeah. it's hard to imagine a world where Snow doesn't survive and come out of this group pretty quickly. I, I, I definitely do agree with you on that. Now, he's going up against Speed. And as you can see, this is only Speed's second ASL. Uh, and he did go 0-2 in the first one. That's, like, always the case, basically. Sure, yeah. uh, but Speed is really good. He has been grinding like crazy. He's played an unbelievable amount of games. He has a very different style than most people. Uh, and, like I mentioned, it is highly aggressive. Like, we could see anything here. We could see two fact, all in on one base. He's one of the only people that really, like, does that uh, still at the pro level. So... Dude. I don't know what to expect here on Radeon. I'm looking at Speed, man. This is the Korean version of the killer from No Country from Old Man. <laughs> this is, <laughs> um, this is going to be a fun one, guys. We're actually getting into this. I thought we had some more downtime to talk over the players. We're going to go to Radeon here for Map 1. Snover Speed starts now. Okay, Snow over here in the top right, uh, in the bottom right is Speed. And um, before we get into this game, guys, as we do for every uh, ASL, we want to do a quick plug here for the Patreon. If you love StarCraft, if you love us, uh, and you want to support our mission to keep the history of StarCraft alive and the stories uh, continuing onward in English, the best way to do that is to go to the Patreon. That's right. Thank you so much to everybody 
who has been uh, supporting on that Patreon. We really appreciate you guys. Couldn't do without you, so thank you very much. Once again, that's patreon.com forward slash ASL English. I love the drawings of snow. It just cracks me up every time <laughs> yeah. we see that in the audience. It's so clear that it's snow. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is going to be um, a fun group. I'm excited that we've got, you know, Mong back. We've got Speed here as well. Speed's a guy, to be honest with you, I don't have a whole lot of familiarity with. I feel like you got to be pretty hardcore into Terran. Um, yeah. To, to have this guy on That's your true. radar. Generally, if you're like a student of a race, you probably have like two to four people you're trying to emulate. Yeah. And, yeah. and you're, whether you're watching their streams or you're, you're following their tournament matches or downloading the replays to study. Um, but, you know, Terran is a race that's, the more I watch it every year, the more I'm realizing there's so many different ways to play it. And yeah. Speed is certainly no exception exception with that. Well, he uh, he has so many different builds and, and uh, strats that he does end up trying. I actually recently uh, saw some of his games on the ladder against Snow. Got to cast those for my channel. And uh, he actually ended up taking down Snow on the ladder 2-1. to one, And it wow. was all super aggressive games. Which I think, you know, there's two ways you can play against Snow. One is getting a ton of units off five or six factories before moving out because of the Reavers. And the other is moving out before the Reavers are there. Yeah. But there's that whole middle period that you have to avoid where the Reavers are active. The scary thing about Snow is he's basically able to eke out more damage versus pushes than anybody I've ever seen. With Reavers, with Dragoons. Like, I've seen so many games where Terran try to start to push Snow, and they've lost everything before the push has even arrived. Like, yeah. where Siege Mode would kick in where they're shelling a base. Um, but yeah, let's see what Speed's going to try here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, you know, he's getting his gas here relatively quickly. Uh, we actually have his scout going up and finding snow right now, so that's kind of nice. He's going to be able to get in there and, and figure out what's going on. There is not a Zealot. Oh, no, there, oh, there it is. is. A Zealot yeah. pops out. So he does, he gets to see that. And that's like one of the best things. If you scout Protoss first, dude, it's so much easier to play. Oh, yeah. By the way, a um, little subtle thing that we just saw over there, the uh, probe ran up and got two hits off on the Marine and runs away. Oh. That's a, a little <laughs> subtle thing. So uh, a probe does five damage, so you can actually just take off 10 HP and then run away before the probe dies. Yeah. And that's like, it's one of these things like we, we could so easily miss it because there's so much other stuff to talk about, yeah. but that's like Snow just doing one thing that it may have no impact on this game. It could be big with the Zealot coming up here, but um, yeah, you know, it's it just, a, it, that's how good Snow is. There's, he doesn't miss a thing. Yeah, and in fact, it, that does a lot mathematically for you. It makes the Zealot hit the Marine twice to kill it instead of three times. It makes the Dragon hit the Marine three times instead of four times. So it's definitely something that is worth some value. Uh, but Speed throws down the bunker immediately after seeing the Zealot. This is actually like uh, a brand new thing for for uh, Terran versus Protoss. Like, for a long time, it was just, like, make three Marines and a Vulture and expand and then make a bunker. Right. But nowadays, because Protoss is sometimes high to Zealot or, like, they've gotten very good at the micro and things like that, uh, we have a lot of games where it's, like, you just make the bunker before the command center. Yeah. Well, you know, I think especially with these Zealot first openings, there's been a lot of moments where you can just kind of come in and punch the Terran in the nose. Yeah. And start to do some damage, and it makes for a pretty unstable early game. By the way, this Vulture's going to come up. This Zealot should block. It's a little bit harder than it looks sometimes to make sure that yeah. that's actually blocking. <laughs> I've had plenty of games where it can wriggle up the uh, the ramp. But, um, yeah, the Dragoon should be popping out in a second. It's one of the most common things now as well. We're talking about early game TVP. You've got to be ready for that Vulture to run. that's going to run inside your base. Yeah, if you don't block that, that can be, like, not game-ending damage, but close. You know, yeah. like, really put you behind type of damage. Also, I do want to mention that Bunker is pretty far forward for speed. That might be playing into his image of, like, yeah. this could be one base. So, when you see a Bunker that far forward, the first thing you want to confirm is that there's actually a command center back there. Because the idea is the Bunker's so far forward, you might not be able to peek in and confirm that. Uh, he did get that Dragoon in. We could see it's lost all of its shields, but it did come in there and check and, and see yeah. that that's actually coming. So, right now, I saw a Siege Tank pop out, as well as Marines being made. So, I think we're going to see... This is so meta right now. This is what every Terran is basically doing, Tasa. So I'm going to give you this little tip. You go four or five Marines, and after your Vulture expand, you make one tank, get mines, and you attack immediately and rally Vultures off of one factory. And this gets there, and normally they don't have more than four gateway units. Right. So you can actually push up and put some real pressure on. Look at this. 
Like, Snow brings another Dragoon from the main base, but he's only got three Dragoons and a Zod. That's, this is like easy for this army to fight against. I like the targeting here. Ooh, okay, he does take the Zealot out here. I was gonna say, I like the targeting of the Robo Bay there. Now that the Zealot's gone, it looks like he wants to inch forward. Now, the Protoss is basically gonna sacrifice this entrance just to buy time. You need to get the fourth Dragoon out here. He's gonna make some structures behind this. Um, but look, I mean, this is a lot. He just took out the Reaver tech, that's yeah. huge. And that's something that Snow wants to use all game. He wants to get his speed quickly. Right. Speed is is winning this game right now. Like it's not it's not the end of the game. There's a ton of play still, but this is the early game has gone completely in Speed's favor. He's really executed this beautifully. I, I want to say we still might see a Reaver come out. Yes. You can queue it up before the building dies. So don't be too shocked if that suddenly happens. He might have actually put a Reaver in there right now. I think he has one. Yeah. It would be surprising if he didn't start one when yeah. he saw it was going to die. <laughs> He's dropping two Dragoons over there. <laughs> like, that's new. <laughs> well, that's not very good. Yeah, that's, a, that's a change in the meta here. Um, so he gets his tech up. He's going to have the shuttle come out here. Speed is going to have to head back home. Um, and we want to watch really closely here. I, I like the turret lining on the outside. I think you don't ever want to let shuttle, I'm sorry, uh, uh, snow drop anything from that shuttle anywhere. So he does actually navigate between the turrets. Yeah, he's finding a way in, as Protoss players tend to do. There's some greatly laid mines in here. Goes back towards the natural. No good defense down there on the bottom. So snow finally finds a location where he can get some damage. A couple SCVs already. In fact, he's killed like three SCVs so far. A vulture goes down, going after this tank. I think he will get it. Yeah, down it goes. Pretty good harass so far. I mean, this is going really well. Now, notice how, what he's choosing to attack. He goes for the SCVs, but he's also making an exit strategy. Yeah. This is one of the things I find the most impressive here with Snow. He knows when it's time to hit the tanks and when it's time to hit the vultures, but also when do I need to get the turrets? And he's able to keep this shuttle alive for so long. He comes around the corner again. I think he's still got plenty of play here. He's gonna fire once more. It goes right through the uh, the mineral patch. Oh! Dude, the amount of damage that he gets with every Reaver. I don't wanna call it unfair, okay. but- You see this? This is the craziest he, thing I've ever he's, seen. He's dodging the, sh the tank shot. If you're fast enough, you can actually drop the Reaver. That was and absurd. Pick it up. That was it's absurd. It's like really hard to do, and we basically never see it. We never see it. But that. he's just looking at this. And he's like, you know what? Like, I'm, I'm. This damage is getting so crazy that it's almost worth the kind of coin flippiness of that move to dodge the tank shot with the shuttle. Yeah. This is wild, man. I can't even believe this. Look at this. Snow is pummeling him. The opening was beautiful for speed. Like, any Terran in the world would be happy with that opening. And Snow just flies across the map, and like, there's, well, there was like four missile turrets, multiple tanks, mines everywhere. It's got 17 kills. Dude, <laughs> this is like face-melting reaver play from Snow. This He's is so killing everything. Remember, you, you can avoid full damage from the uh, the reaver if you're pulling the tank away. Dude, this is insane. Look at, look at Speed's face. This, this is pain. Dude. This like, is crazy. I, this is it's like the most damage ever. It's got 21 kills and it's gonna get away. Imagine this oh my tasteless, right? God. You're, you're a pro gamer that has practiced so hard for this ASL. Your opening build does fantastically. You kill a building, you're putting good pressure on, you have tons of anti-air, and then the Reaver flies back across the map and kills you by itself. I mean, this is just insane. Oh my God, another hit. He's gonna get more SCVs. Oh, now there's Glyas here. This is done. Okay, finally, 24 kills. Oh! Ooh. There's Dragoons up here, apparently. Dude, 24 kills, though. It doesn't even matter what it is. He did so much damage. This is wild, man. Now he's going to kill the Goliaths off? Now, here's the thing. Most Terrans, I think, leave the game <laughs> at this point in time. You're like, why am I even in here? Yeah. Um... You know, as far as I can tell, Snow didn't miss a beat back at home. He's continuing to make probes. He's continuing to build out his infrastructure. This is insane. Yeah, yeah, he's doing a fantastic job. And look at this, 100 supply to 60, that doesn't even make sense. Look at that move he just did. Yeah. He drops a Dragoon and then uses the other Dragoon to, to pull the mine, to uproot it. Yeah. And then, and then avoid damage. Like, me, like, Baboon Tasteless would have just dropped one Dragoon there and eaten the damage and made the Nexus. Like he's, he's... And it would have killed your probe. You'd have to send another probe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's just crazy to me how on top of everything Snow is. From the, the two probe hits 
on the Marine to that mine being yes. thrown back there. Like he's the perfect Protoss player. He just triggered the mine on the, the other third base as well with the Reaver and popped it back in. So like he's just, dude, he's doing all the things. He's doing all the little edge cases where like you aren't taking damage from anything ever. It's wild because like one of the things that can happen when you're going for Reaver play against uh, uh, Terran is that sometimes mines will just delay your bases. Yeah. Like one mine, it's just, it's hard to deal with, you know. Um, but he's like completely doing this perfectly. He must have the entire rhythm of PVT so mapped out that he could basically do a perfect build while microing a shuttle perfectly. Oh, for sure, yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's crazy. You said it before, he's like the best PVT player in the history of the game. Yeah. It is the case. It is the case. Yeah. Like he, he has single handedly forced Terrans to change the metagame. Like, the reason, a big part of the reason, at least, why we have everyone going five and six factory is Snow's Reavers, you know? They, and everyone's kind of taken what Snow does, and they do it, but they can't do it as well, but they do it. And Well, it's it's hard, right? I mean, yeah. he, he's just, he's so good with Reavers. Like, you think of all the history of StarCraft, so much of this matchup used to be, like, the Terran and the Protoss not really interacting with each other. Yeah. The Terran's, like, seeing stuff, and the Protoss is out there, and you're just making buildings. Terran's like getting factories and Protoss is taking other um, spawning locations and making gateways. But then you look at like what Snow is doing and he's so active. This is another thing that I think Snow is the best at. He knows how to basically send these shuttles in like this. Um, and it pulls the Terran back into the main. And a lot of times this, the Reavers will just get these amazing connections where they wipe out vultures or tanks. Um, and then he gets back out. First shuttle comes in full of zealots to, to um, kill the turrets off mm -hmm. and, and, and soak up the mines, and then he says the other shuttle just come in there and start hitting stuff. It's it's amazing what he's doing right now, and it, speed has already taken a ton of damage. You can see the ridiculous advantage Snow has. He's on four bases. He's up over 50 supply already. That's 50% more supply than what speed has. Everything here is really, really bad, really terrible for speed. And look at the amount of gateways coming up. From this point, the right choice is anything you want in snow, but probably the quickest way to end this game, you macro out gateway units, and what is speed going to be able to do? Dude, these scarabs are insane. I'm looking at Artosis. He's in pain right now. Yeah, I'm in pain. He's he's just watching this and wondering if he's ever going to be able to stop this kind of play. Like, snow is so... Okay, here we go. He's going to attack it again. And, I mean, it, it makes it look like we're, you know, Terran's ever beating Protosses. Like, no. This, this, <laughs> <laughs> this is just crazy to me. I mean, this game is probably going to end. I think Speed has to tap out. The fact that the Terran was on two bases turtling and got this smash, knew what was coming, by the way. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like it was a cheesy reaver jump. Yeah, look at, look at Speed here. Wow. The pain, the pain is real, but so is the, the shuttle reaver play. I yeah. assume that that was a GG tap out there. Yeah. Um, no, that was that was uh, incredibly, incredibly one-sided. I feel like the anxiety levels for every turn of this tournament are just worse seeing that. I mean, that, that, I, was, yeah. that was the most dominant performance we've had in, in ASL for the season. The first five minutes, Speed outplayed him. Like, he did yeah. he did a great job. He put on some great pressure. That would be an opening any turn would be happy with. Doesn't matter. Snow just smashes anyways. Yeah, even seeing the, the very rare trick where you try to drop the Reaver and pick it back up before the tank shot connects onto the Reaver. Yeah. I mean, insanity, dude. Speed, the salt is real. What are you going to do, man? That's why we have that loser's part of the, uh, <laughs> the yeah, bracket, yeah, right? Yeah. So you don't just get boned by snow and, and never get to play again. <laughs> so true. Well, who knows? Maybe that could happen. Like, Shine beats him in, <laughs> in the winter match. <laughs> yeah. And then Speed's like, no, man. Like, Please. come on. If you only get eliminated by Snow as a Terran player, that's the worst luck you can have. <laughs> you can learn a lot from just following this Reaver play. Like the fact that he dropped the Dragoon first just in case there's a mine. Yep. He knows to pull the Dragoon back. He doesn't let the Dragoon uh, go too far out. He's then what, done enough damage. He moves in here. And then look, he sees the turret on the left. This is really important. You, you have to know, okay, is it time to hit SCVs or is it time? So he gets one hit off on the turret first yeah. so that it's burning. So that he can get as much damage with the shuttle and the reaver that at the last second he can then do the second shot to kill it. So now he has an escape route. That's right. That's right. It's very well done. Super well executed. No one can use reavers like him. He really is the best ever. He even knows to drop the reaver really close to the mineral because it's more likely to slide through. That's right. Yeah. And then watch this. Watch this. Here we go. Why are they covering this up? All right. He's going to drop. He's trying to get it. Yeah. 
the tank crazy. Has, the tank has to turn the, uh, the the turret on top of it. Yeah. To get it there, and if you can do it just right, so he, he avoids a tank shot for free. That's by that's doing insane. that. That's a, a, like I don't know if I've ever even seen that. Oh, you don't need to know about that. I don't yeah. think I even knew about that. Like if I did, it was a long time ago. I forgot yeah. about it because no one does that. Nobody, nobody bothers. No one does that. Nobody bothers to do that in that kind of situation because it's so hard. Yeah. And your time is better spent macroing or something. Yeah. But there you go, guys. Short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. We've literally just been sitting, talking about yeah, that total replay this entire time. Yeah, we might as well have not been in the mic and just kept talking like it's crazy. It's, 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 okay, you know how much value the reaper got? Like, it got 24 kills, there was also lost mining time. Yeah, okay. So even if it only killed the cheapest units, which would be SCVs, which is also terrible, but it also did things like kill paints and missile turrets and vultures. Yeah, it killed so much. 24 kills, even at only 50 minerals a kill. What is that? It's like 200, and then you can do 50 times 20. Like, what the hell? Dude, that's like, he could have had like a third base with all that money with turrets up everywhere. It's like, it doesn't even make well, yeah, sense. Yeah, amount of damage. There's a point in time it's like, how much can Terran possibly have? <laughs> in the thousands of minerals of damage. Literally thousands of minerals of damage. And some gas damage. It's like, uh, and the Reaver, like, the, the, for the cost of the Reaver, the cost of the Scarab, the scarab shot is like 15 minerals, I believe. I know it costs something. It's, it's 15. 15, right? Okay. Um, 
자, 이어지는 오늘의 두 번째 경기는 윤찬희 선수와 이양환, 이영환 선수가 기다리고 yeah. 있습니다. 두 번째 경기 지금 바로 함께합니다. That, that, that was like no expansion yeah. and a robo proxy. That was like just a standard poke. That he, there was one turret that was not on the high ground. Yeah. Basically, Speed had set it up so that the turrets should be positioned so that the shuttle can never even touch. They have to fly over to, they, to yeah, get in. They would have to overcommit and possibly lose the shuttle. He found one hole in there, got in, and completely wrecked Speed. Yeah. Like, it's insane. Yeah. That's how scary Snow is. So, I just typed in my calculator because I can't do math, really. But, uh, it, minimum 1,200 minerals of damage. Minimum. But he also was killing tanks, turrets, things like that. Yeah. Dude, it's just, it's, that's three command centers minimum. That he, yeah. Like, what? <laughs> snow is out of this world. He, in fact, instead of casting this next game, let's just talk about good snow is. Yeah, yeah we're going to be in this game. There's going to be the most hype TVZ ever, and we're just still talking about that shuttle and reaver. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, man. Man, well, we're going to look, uh, we have a lot to look forward to in that winner's match for whoever's going to move on here. Um, this is going to be Shine versus Mong. Um, Shine is really one of my favorite players. Yeah. Like, I, I think that anybody who's a fan of StarCraft has to also be a fan of Shine. Because he's always been the best at doing the off-brand strategy. He's cheesy, he's tricky. Uh, he's also, he has solid fundamentals as well. I think when we talk about cheesy players, sometimes it can sound dismissive. Like, yeah, no, that's not the case with Shine. Yeah, no, he's... He, He's very well planned out. He's very, very smart, and he actually can play insanely good macro games. He just does them in different ways a lot of the time. Uh, now, these two going up against each other, it looked, statistically looking at it, like it was their worst matchups. And maybe technically it is. I know it is for Mong, his worst matchup. Yeah. Uh, Terran Berserk. Yeah. But for Shine, a lot of his losses are against people like Flash. So, it, like, yeah. you shouldn't take, you take that with a grain of salt. He's very good surgery Terran. Yeah, very crafty. Uh, I'm excited to get into this game. We're ready to go, guys. This TVZ starting now. Okay, we have uh, Mong here in the bottom right, Shine in the top left. Um. Anyways, about that shuttle. <laughs> about that reaver drop. The last guy's oh, man. crazy, this man. Uh, um, anyways, guys, no, but in all seriousness, um, this is going to be a fun one. You know, I, Shine is very willing to do, like, weird lurker drops or all-ins, um, guardian techs <laughs> on yeah. base. Yeah, yeah. Um, he can go for, as Artosis calls it, crazy Zerg. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, it... it, it, it I feel like we see him obviously do weird stuff more than common stuff. But For sure. The most dangerous players that cheese are the ones where you still don't know if 100% they're going to do it. Yeah. Like, and anybody who you've played with regularly, and I know a lot of people, they just have like the ladder experience, but even on the ladder, if, if it's not a barcode, you, you sometimes you'll find out you're encountering like the same person. Yeah. For weeks. Um, and you get to find out, okay, did they just, is it like a one-trick pony? Yeah. Or does this person have like a dynamic set of strategies? Um, but anybody you played who's cheesy, you know the hardest time you're going to have is if you can't 100% know, they might just play normal. Yeah. And you've, you've invested way too much in defending or you played a little bit too scared. It's true. And it's, it's hard to do certain builds against Shine as well. There's like... Some people are a little bit one-dimensional, and it's like, okay, this guy's going to go to Edge Buda. You know, there's certain players like that. Shine, for instance, I believe it was two or three seasons ago, he killed a bunch of the best Terrans in the world, if you recall this. I think he, he beat Royal, and he beat some other guys. And he was doing stuff like three-hatch lurker macro play. Yeah. Where he'd open three hatch lurker instead of two hatch muta, as opposite as you can get. Yeah. But he's not all inning you. He's actually playing macro, yeah. and it's like, yeah. it, I tell you what, you're trying to do something like a quick eBay build with a fast plus one, and you run into that, you're you've already lost basically when it's shine. So and, and just for for the people that don't really get the nuance of some of these builds, because I know we have a, you know there's more people that watch StarCraft than play. That's the truth. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's hard to really get into StarCraft because of how hardcore it is. But the money that you're spending defending or, or over scouting um, if nothing special is coming it does hurt you do yeah. feel it as you try to get into the later part of the game 
Man. Well, I'm, I'm, I kind of have myself uh, <laughs> revved up a little bit to just see what Shine wants to do. You know, I, I really have no idea. Like, it could be anything. He could go two hatch lurker, but it's like a macro build. He might just go two hatch mutant and just play completely standard, right? The, yeah. That is a that is a real possibility. And honestly, not even that bad of move against Mong. Like Mong is pretty good macro wise, but he does have a hard time against the really aggressive Zerg players. Right. So we've got two hatch layer. Um, no big tech reveal so far. Although the more this game goes on, the more it looks like it'll probably just be muta tech. Yeah. So pretty standard opening here. We don't have any reveal on where the third base is going to be. But on a map like this, and this is one of the tricky things actually about crossbond TVZ, the third base for the Zerg, it's not obvious to the Terran because there's two different sides to the map. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I would say on specifically Radeon, probably it would be top right. Cause, oh, really? Is yeah, that those spawns are like kind of a little bit closer well, than what, like. What about bottom twelve o'clock? I mean, is that yeah, he, oh, that's an okay spot too, right? If you're playing a very aggressive game, twelve o'clock can be good. Okay. Or even your third base could be reasonable. And if you're playing like hyper aggressive, like Zealot, you could expand literally anywhere. You could you could go to six o'clock because you're just keeping the mutilus micro on. Right. So we don't know what Shine's like actual game plan is. A lot of times, just seeing where they expand will give you a very good idea of the type of game they want to put out. Now, um, this SCV is still scouting. Monk's actually done a great job keeping this alive. It is harder for the Terran to keep the scout alive because the damage is permanent. Yeah. It's not like the drone or the probe where there's some kind of um, health recovery mechanism. Yeah. Um, he's got some speedlings out here. He's going to get that second gas, and this is lining up to be uh, the classic uh, two hatch muta play, TVZ. So, Shine, no tricks so far. No tricks so far. Uh, I do want to see when he throws down that third hatchery, right? Because. There's like a lot of ways you could do it. Like some people would just make their third in their main right now, but I feel like it's going to be at a different location. Just like I, I don't know the look of this game. I, I believe that that's going to be the case. Now Mong has gone into just like a two barracks academy rush. That's why Shine has some speedlings right outside. Uh, he's ready to dart in if the bio moves out to try to force it back home. But I don't even know that Mong will walk out because like Shine is a dangerous player to do that against, anyways. So he's just going to try to kill some of these lings off if he can. Um, Zergling Vision, is Zergling, they have like the worst vision besides Scourge. Is that correct? I don't know, but they should. That would make sense. Yeah. Because I know like, for instance, Zealots have much better vision. Protoss buildings also just like have like, yeah, further the, vision the range. Yeah, the Protoss Worker and uh, the Assimilator and the Nexus all have one more vision than their counterparts. I think it was like a mistake when Blizzard was making it. Like, it doesn't have the biggest impact here, but, but the, the reason why I'm bringing that up and is... And the Assimilator has double health and doesn't need anything there to build it. Does that seem fair? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the reason why I was pointing out the Zerglings um, stalking the Marines is it's hard. You have to be almost in, in shooting yeah, range yeah, to yeah. follow the Marines, so it's kind of like a skill in of itself. You have to be salty right now. Think about all these Protoss things. You ruined the cast, Steve. It's like, I can't do this, man. I'm just so angry right now. I'm thinking yeah, about so this is like, my why? Speed. <laughs> oh, my God. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, well, uh, Terran's been pretty um, modest as far as pushing out. He's kind of come out a little bit, cleared Lings, and come back. Um, Shine's going to have these mutas coming down now. Yeah, and he did choose to take the uh, other third base uh, that we see, like the one that's like his kind of like natural third, we would call it. And that one, like it, that one's so far away, you're never really going to be able to kill it. But it doesn't really tell us what he wants to do. The fourth base could be a tricky one for trying to take because it'll, it'll be far away from like his, his center of defense. But I guess we'll just see what Shine's plans are. He's coming in for some harassment, and in fact. Dealing some reasonable damage. There were no missile turrets down there, and then he starts flying away. And this is because Mong is stimming across the map. He's looking for some massive damage, and the mutas have to come down. Dude, he actually might be able to take this. He's, he's doing a supply block. Oh, my God. So those overlords are supposed to be in the control group with the mutalisks. That's why they're there. Um, but he ended up sniping two of those. And so this is going to sandbag uh, development for, like, any more mutas or lings. I'm actually surprised he didn't push him further after getting the kill. I think once the Muta's left, like, you know the, the travel speed, right? So he's, like, across the map. He's like, the Muta's are almost even. I'm not going right. to go off and get flanked or something. So what he wants to do is trade these as well as he can. He knows that he's going to lose this Bioforce almost 100%. 
but if he can micro like this, kill a couple more mutas on the way. Dude, this got the mutas out of his base. It killed two overlords supply blocking. He got a drone with the marine that went to the side, and he ended up killing three or four mutas there. Like that was superb play from Mom. Yeah. I mean, really cool to see it. it. Kind of a different approach. We don't normally see Terrence actually go for that move, but it, it made Shine an honest player, man. Yep. He had to come yep. right back and respect the threat that was created there. The Muters are going to come in once more. There's only one turret here. There's a second one building, but it's not exactly positioned in a way that it can complement the first turret. So there's going to be more damage here. Yeah, he should actually just keep his mutas in that bottom right corner. That's like, that's a crazy area for him. Yeah. Uh, the only way this gets crazier is if if Snow's shuttle flies in during this fight and kills everything here too. Yeah. I'm like I've seen a lot of Terran players get murdered in this corner of the map, Artos, for sure. Dude, he has no turrets at the bottom of the command center, bottom right. I feel like well, Shine here is just he's doing something very specific where he has the lings beating on the turrets and then he's stopping the Marines from coming down the ramp. Yeah, and these lings, can, if they kill all these turrets, the Mutas are going to destroy all these SCVs. Yeah. It's crazy what two Zerglings can do down here. Yeah. And Zerglings are so much more microable than SCVs. Like, if the SCVs come and attack, you can just pull them away. This is a wild position. Shine is smashing face right now. He is really far ahead, right? Like, he went from this position where we're like, wow, Mong, Mong did a really great job there with the supply block and everything, killing some Mutas. And now he just tore apart four buildings. This one's on fire, forcing it back. Might even end up killing it. Here come more mutalists. And don't forget, last time he was in there, there was no turret on the bottom of the command center. Look at this, just one? Dude, you can sit in there all day and kill SCVs if you want, but he, I feel like he's being nice to Mom in the meanest way. This is this whole day has just been Terrans getting murdered in the bottom right on this yeah. map, Artosis. Um, He's still doing a lot of damage. It's crazy how sometimes Terrans look like impenetrable and safe and, and kind of like fortressed off. And then you have this situation where it's like turrets are not quite placed perfectly and Lings can just carve their way through and Mutas can just keep doing damage. He literally can't get Marines down his ramp. Yeah. And he's losing every turret too. He's built so many turrets and Shine is just killing all of them. The game's done. He's, he's trying to get this Valkyrie out. I think that's like the last thing that Mon can even try to do is make Valkyries really pay off. He's actually but hitting the barracks. This is another way Terrence will just lose his drone here. Make a hatch. Do it, please. Make a hatch. Even, even if that's a mistake, you have to make a hatch. You have to make Those a are the hatch. rules. Actually, it's in the rule book for ASL. Dude, honestly, if he made a hatch, there might, that, that would actually probably cause drama in the pro scene. Yeah. Like, that would be so rude. <laughs> <laughs> and look at this. All the overlords are coming in. Oh, man. I, he's got to have the Valkyrie out finally. So these overlords that are flying in here, this oh is so crazy. He just supply blocked yeah. himself. Yeah. <laughs> he, he flew his overlord into a turret at the Terran's natural <laughs> cross spawns artosis. I've seen it all now. Well, this is what happens when you're microing that heavily, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. Coming in with those mutas once again. The Valkyrie. Oh, he's going to get it. He's going to get it. Yeah. Tough call. I mean, even the Valkyrie goes in. I think actually we're going to see Mong tap out here. Yeah. It's so much damage. The lings going into the natural here again. Look at the amount of SCVs that are going to go down. He can bring the lings back to kill the turrets, which I'm sure is what he wants to do. Marine's going to try to come down to help. You really need the turrets as well. You can't just do Marine Valkyrie at this point. Yeah. You don't have enough. Yeah. And you know, one Valkyrie is never that scary for the Zerg. They can kind of just yeah. eat the shots. It's when you get like three or four. But I mean, he's just going to come in here and kill that off. And, and I, I do not know if Mom's going to stay in this. I mean, it's hard to imagine a world where he's going to recover and even claim his natural expansion. Ooh. Ooh. That is that is a rough game there for Mon. It looks so promising for both of our Terran players at the beginning of the game. So yeah. Like, wow, yeah. these guys are opening really well today. <laughs> and then the Zerg and Frodoss opponents just rip their heads yeah. off, man. This isn't a tournament. This is a gore film, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like you let him think that he has a chance. Yeah. You know, it's like one of those really sad things where it starts out and you see, like, this beautiful deer like eating grass in the woods and then you pull the camera shot back and a hunter shoots it with a rifle <laughs> and then shines you to show up and kill the deer and the babies <laughs> yeah yeah um well guys i mean it, it's funny a, a lot of times we're talking about strategies or build orders these have been purely uh, mechanical tactical micro victories um yeah so we're gonna have a tvt losers match we're gonna have shine versus uh snow which could not be more hype.
it's going to be a great match. That, that's what I was expecting coming into today. Sure. Was that we would see that, and I do think that that's the biggest chance for Snow to maybe, you know, not come out in first place. Shine, he might have a build that literally no one's ever seen that he wants to use. Like, he does that from time to time. Remember that season where everyone started calling him Vaga Builds? And yeah, like, yeah. He was like, I remember in the interview, he was being asked, like, oh, where did you uh, come up with this build? He's like, oh, I've saved this build actually since 2009. Yeah. Like, I thought of it in 2009, I just haven't used it yet. And yeah. it's like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, How could that be? It's crazy because, you know, the truth is Zerg doesn't demand crazy builds all the time. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple good cheese rushes and, and, and macro builds, but he really uh, has such a range. And, you know, here it was, a very standard game. Could have been any other Zerg yeah. in the world if he covered up that ID. Uh, sure. Yeah. It just looked like solid, standard Zerg micro play. Um, yeah, no no real mind games or anything. Nothing. Right. Nothing. Right. Um, Again, shine and never sleep on him. Coming up next, guys, our winner's match, Snow versus Shine.
right. Let's zoom in on the Zerg Protoss banner Zertosis. Yeah, it's a that's fitting our camera shot. Yeah, that's why they did that, guys. <laughs> that's the magic of television. Oh, um, yeah, this yes. matchup has them next to each other. Yeah. You know, technically, those symbols were never in StarCraft 1. That's right. Those are StarCraft 2 symbols. That is correct. Yeah. That is correct. That's cultural appropriation here for this <laughs> tournament. <laughs> yeah. I actually, I think it's a good ad to have symbols that represent the races. I think 100%. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't really have anything very much like that. What we used to use in tournaments was like the silhouette of a Marina Hydro. I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. And, but like... Yeah, the, these are these are more stylistic, I guess. You know, no, Blizzard did a good job yeah. actually making those symbols. I think they're very fitting, very distinct from each other. I don't quite understand the the Protoss one, but it looks pretty good, anyways. Yeah, it looks like a, a nice like lapel or something. Yeah, something like it's that. It's like a, a, for Protoss prom. I would like it was my date, like corsage. <laughs> I would get them like I'd pin that onto her dress. That's yeah, what it looks like. Oh damn. Um, okay, well we're here. I, by the way, we were like asking each other on the break, like. How long have we been casting for? I thought it was 25 minutes. It's been an hour. <laughs> the games have been so hype right now. Yeah, no, this is a, this is an interesting day so far. All right, we are getting into this. It's going to be Citadel winners match here in Snow and Shine. Okay. Um, shine in the top left, and we're gonna have. I'm sorry, was that snow? Uh, snow in the top left. Excuse me. Shine in the bottom left. Mm. I do that a lot as well. I'm like, I, sometimes I'll think I'm in like the bottom left, or oh, the top left, and I'm not. The I'm number in. of games where I've like made my first pylon, and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> this is in the top right. This is the bottom yeah. right, and now I've like got my gateway like as far away from the ramp as possible. That's so funny. Everyone does it. Yeah. Like, if I scout the gate and it's, like, behind the Nexus, I'm like, oh, you thought you were bottom left? Yeah. The guy would be like, yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, thanks. Now it takes your goon, like, seven more seconds to get to my base. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, this is going to be a fun one. By the way, I, 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 I meant to um, mention this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it right now because I'm going to forget otherwise. Um, Sh uh, Snow's got a huge YouTube. Yeah. And if you actually subscribe, like, pay five bucks a month you can get his guides yeah that's and, sick. and with uh youtube now I, I just found out about this i don't know if everybody knows about this and i'm like late oh, to yeah. the party. No, I, I pay for lights guides on his youtube yeah but but you can also <laughs> set it where it auto translates what they're saying oh so really? it'll be okay. in, so cool. so you don't have to know korea sick. so you just um you like turn on subtitles and then do auto translate and it's not perfect and honestly in every one of the beginnings of the videos, it's almost incoherent. Yeah. Like, you, it's kind of Too sounds, much lingo, probably. There's too much lingo. There's there's kind of meme slang. Also, like, you almost have to, like, know what a Korean accent is. Like, the, the, the translator will say, like, river, but it, I know he means reaver. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But um, you can kind of make out what they're what the strategies are. You can yeah. learn a lot. So oh, that's I, cool. I wanted to tell people that because, you know, you can watch streams and learn a lot, but I do think StarCraft is so much more than just, like, APM. Yeah, and build orders. There, you have to understand the reasoning behind stuff. Absolutely. And I found his guides to be very good. And even if you don't know like any Korean, you can you can try turning on those tools oh, on cool. YouTube. That's cool. That's a it's a great uh great thing to point out. But yeah, yeah, he's he's pretty popular on YouTube. He has a lot of fans. Uh, he does like a lot of like goofy streams and goofy builds and stuff. Actually, every now and then, like a few times a week, I'll just hit some Korean player. And they'll see I'm on my Artos ID. They're like, oh, you know Snow? Because he's bashed me so <coughs> many times in his videos on his Oh, YouTube. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think you think it looked bad against speed? You should see against me, man. <laughs> I've oh, seen boy. some of those games, man. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so Snow's going for the Gateway Expand. Uh, by the way, this map, everything's on low ground, but the ramps like go up and then down. That's right. So that's kind of a cool little thing for this map. Tiny I little line of uh, high ground at the apex of each ramp. Right. Correct. Um, so we went for a gateway expand, but it was a pretty passive gateway expand. Um, uh, Snow is just going to be macroing up. He just made one zealot, got the nexus down here, and he's just going to keep scouting with the probe, so it's going to be a quiet start. Yeah, not a whole lot to uh, say about that, but Snow will continue to build out some Zealots and I'm sure push across the map here eventually. Uh, we'll see if he wants to wall in with that Forge now. I think that is the case, obviously, since uh, we don't see a gas being taken in the main base. 
So he'll get that prepared. And oh, actually, Shine making some extra lings. Now this is this is what could end up going wrong. Like maybe Shine does a massive ling all in. I mean, I would not be surprised. Um, he's hit this pretty well so far. So notice the Zerglings don't have speed, and he's only got four, which is kind of like the bare minimum. So the idea is he's going to try to zone this out and, and just slip these lings through. The, Look at him. The, keep him just out of vision. Now, the, the probe has huge vision range. It does. So this is really tricky to do. Okay, he knows now. Now he knows. Okay. Immediately, you need to throw down defenses. There are three Zealots. There's I'm, a cannon warping in. I think he's okay. It looks like he's fine to me. Like, 100% fine. I don't think... I don't think he's going to get anything done with these links. Well, we might have this play where he just takes all of his links and tries to kill the gateway in the forge and win that way. Okay. I, whenever, I don't think it's going to work. Whenever you see the gateway being attacked like this, you, you should immediately throw down cannons and get ready because it's an all-in. Um, but Shine is such a mind gamer, he might actually just, he's like, maybe he wants you to throw down two cannons well, or Well, Ling's speed never finishes. I'm, I'm a little bit confused. I think he did mind game him. Yeah. That's what Shine does. That's wild. Like, that's a lot of money on Ling's Artosis. Those those could have been drones. I know, yeah. Like, maybe it just went wrong because Snow kept his uh, the probe alive for so long and maybe Shine backs out of it into something else. You know, we can't tell what's in production. That's just not a thing in StarCraft 1. Right. So we can't tell, like, maybe he canceled out speed and went layer. Maybe he, you know, maybe he never got speed. It's, it's hard to say. So uh, he is droning up from here. He has some lings out, so as these five Zoths start to walk forward, he can think about uh, killing them off with these lings. But, yeah, looking at this, I, I gotta tell you, it looks much better for Snow, in my opinion. Well, I mean, if you're Protoss and, and you know, they made a lot of lings that didn't get anything done, yeah, you're in good shape, you know. Um, he, he, the layer is gonna be coming, I think, a little bit sooner than one would expect from seeing those Zerglings come up. But he also, he's confirming every time he moves out that there's no link speed. Now, if I was Snow in this position, I would think there's a Hydra bus coming. Oh. Um, but there's not that either. There's yeah, no layers there's not. There's so it's, not. it's a really weird, tricky game. You know, that, that's one of the hard things about playing against Shine, too. You can get in your own head about what he might be doing because yeah. he is known as being so tricky. So maybe it's better to just pretend it's not Shine. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's better yeah. because Shine uses his own image against people quite often. Yeah. So, like, maybe it's better to just be like, no, you're just a ladder zerg. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. Like, I almost feel like I play better in ladder games if I don't look at the rank. Yeah, if I've I, heard Nyokin said that to me as well. Yeah, like, at the moment I see that they're like, oh, it's an s rank Terran, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I don't have Oh, confidence. you get scared, yeah. I get scared yeah, yeah. Or, or, I, or I wouldn't do what I normally do, where it's probably almost better if I just treated it like it's another player. Yeah. Good or bad. I almost wish they would make a feature like that on Battle.net. Like, do you want to see their rank or not? Mm. Do you want to see their ID or not? You know? <laughs> Imagine Blizzard doing something yeah. on Battle.net. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it feels bad, man. It feels it bad. feels bad. <laughs> I laugh because I'm sad. <laughs> yeah. I laugh because I don't want to cry. <laughs> um, the Lings are going to come down here. He's got to be careful. That Corsair, yeah. Woo. Not going to be able to kill that Overlord in time. The Zealots are going to back up. That was a deep move there with yeah. the zealots coming all the way down that's very high risk but i guess if you don't have ling speed you can you can make moves like that yeah well he's uh going up with the lings maybe trying to catch the zealots is that what he's doing here it kind of looks like he's coming for a flank on them okay gets ahead of them more lings coming but that's a lot of zealots man i don't think he can really do much with that many lings yeah, I don't think he could do that much at all. He's going to get the Templar Archives. He's probably getting Zealot Speed here. Um, and, you know, Shine is just developing. He hasn't committed to anything. I thought maybe we'd have Mutas come out. And, yeah. And there would be, you know, I thought so Scourge Muta play. And, yeah. and he's really just kind of feigned a lot of... He's created a lot of amb ambiguity, and he's feigned a lot of pressure. Um, very cool to see Shine approaching this like this. But Snow hasn't seemed to like overreact to anything, so I'm not yeah. sure that it worked out that well. Now, do we actually get a surround. Finally, speed is done for the Zerglings, and he's trying to pick these off before plus one is done. If plus one finishes, you can actually kind of massacre those, but Snow does end up backing up with most of them, but Shine deals some reasonable damage there. Yeah, it was not bad. I mean, I think that's the best you can try to go for here. We've got the uh, four gateways up. Plus one attack is done. So we're probably going to see armor in a second here. 
Um, I didn't see if he got the attack upgrade on the Corsairs, but he's got enough Corsairs that he can generate threats. Yeah, not, not entirely sure about that one, but uh, they're still flying around, still looking to see if they can get some damage done. Yeah, no plus one attack as of yet, at least. Oh, it is spinning, though, so I guess he is getting that plus one. I do know as well that Shine, uh, sometimes even if he's not going Mutalisks at the beginning, will start his plus one carapace for that later Muta switch. I've seen him do that recently, actually, in Zerg vs. Protoss. Yeah, yeah. Um... The Corsairs come out, and they're going to just try to hit these Overlords over here. He was pretty Scourge Light, by the way. Yeah. Like, five Corsairs is a lot. Oh, this DT's just going to get in here. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I kind of can't believe this. Yeah, that's a I, little bit surprising. I actually thought there was another Overlord somewhere in here, but clearly there's not. Um, so, I mean, this is pretty bad, actually. I mean, the, the Zealots can come in here now. I still don't see Overlords over there. Dude. I mean... You don't normally see Zergs die on three bases, but, you know, situations like this can get pretty bad. I mean, with the Hydras coming to defend the third, the Corsairs could hit the Overlord again in the natural. Usually, all the Overlords in the natural, too. Like, he's going to kill this Overlord. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. And then, here's the thing. There's probably not much defending. I guess there's a couple Hydras under the Overlord. Yeah. But, like, this is a lot of lost mining time. This is insane amounts of damage from this High Templar. It's, it, I mean, Dark Templar. It, that... I am so impressed. Like, if you covered up these names, I would tell you this is Bisu. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it looks a lot like Bisu right now. It does. But, like, that's crazy. When you send the DT out on the map, like, you're looking for some damage, but it's not the, the ultimate strategy. Yeah. You're not like, well, here's what I do. I kill his Overlord off and take out his third. That's like he just got in there and went, wait a minute. Yeah. You've got one Overlord. All right. Send the DT in. Right now, brings up more Zealots to try to deal with these as he is going to hunt more Overlords. Oh my god, he's going to get two kills there. The Zealots chomping through all of these Hydralisks. Well, and here's, here's the thing, oh. too. There's enough Zealots here um, that you know you could actually you know, just force this fight. He's, the Overlords are going to be pulled even further back. Oh, Scourge are going to come in here. Uh, he gets some connections, but still four left over. The Zealot on top of those Hydralisks as well, so yet another Overlord falls. Dude, Snow is just clowning on Shine right now. Well, this is wild, man. I mean, Zerg supply block. You got to be careful. You can easily overextend here as Protoss if you keep sending Zealots in. But, like, right now, uh, the Zerg's at 60 of 54 supply. Uh, Snow has all the gateways he needs for the time being. He's got Ooh. his Robotech up. Yeah. Dragoon Range is coming. That's kind of the last upgrade Protoss get. When then they're basically a, a, a Zerg fighting machine. Mm -hmm. He's got everything. Dude, there's not even enough extractors on this map to do enough extractor tricks to get any more supply here for Shine. <laughs> this is, it's a really rough situation. Another Overlord falls. Dude, Shine is just being put through the ringer. More Zealots coming in. Shine's trying to utilize this choke to make it a bit harder to break through. Oh, uh-oh, there's a DT in here, so you know those Corsairs are going to come back as well. Yeah, the Zelts are going to come in and just get right back out. And, I mean, keep in mind, Zerg is, he literally cannot take a fourth base right now. Normally, it's the, the, you know, the Zerg is engaging with the Protoss, trying to stop yeah. the Protoss from expanding. This is a game where the Protoss is in total control. It is wild to see just how good Snow has gotten in all the matchups. Because, something to note, actually, guys, Snow's record pre-ASL, he had zero wins against Zerg. Yeah. And, like, yeah. it took him several ASL seasons to get his first win against Zerg. And now he literally, again, watching it, it looks like it's Bisu. Like, he's just so good. And it's that, you're right with the Bisu thing, 100%. It's a very straightforward style. Yeah. It's like, actually, I, I beat up on Zergs. Zergs are weak versus Protoss when I play the game. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, he's, he's just, he's exploiting what you would think is Zerg's strength, right? That... Uh, overlords are detectors and hydras can protect them. He's like, no, no, no. Overlords are weak and the hydras can't save them when he's playing the game. Yeah. So uh, now, Shine's banked up a bunch of mutas and this fight's not done. He's got more mutas to the point where he can kill the Corsairs. He could also snipe the Templars. I think Snow has to turn around right now. Oh, oh uh, yeah, no, I guess so. Like, the, that is a big group of mutas flying in. Now, uh, he does throw a storm down, and oh, that is a lot of damage. The Corsair's fighting pretty damn well. These, these are getting very low. Yeah, he's, he might have to sack the Corsairs just to keep the Templars around. Those are very low mutas. Like, one storm will kill five or six of those. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the, the 
fear for the Protoss is that all the storms are spent trying to stop the Mutas, and then the Hydras just come in and win. Yeah. Because if Hydras, if, like if Protoss didn't have Storm, you would just never beat Zerg. Yeah. They just get enough Hydras, they'd overpower you. Well, the Mutas fly in here and uh, are trying to get a little bit of damage. There's a Storm, and there are the Corsairs. So all the Mutas going to end up dying. Still not not feeling too good for shine here but shine has gotten a bit more supply at this point he is down about 40 but he has a lot of hydras do you think this is enough for him to actually maybe challenge the third i don't know it doesn't feel right no you know what i mean it feels like the best thing that protoss could ask for is hydras attacking into templars and cannons and zealots and dragoons yeah like when the, when the protoss has a finished army and they're just sitting there it's like really hard for the zerg to get in there and do anything it's kind of like when Terran has like siege tanks up in mines, it's like uncomfortable for the Protoss to try to advance on it. You kind of want to get, you want to hit when they're on the move and, and, yeah. and vulnerable. But the problem is also, you know, the third base is now up. Shine doesn't have a fourth base. So it looks like nothing's happening, but I can imagine uh, Shine is probably a little bit panicked here. He needs to either take a fight and win or start to grow. The DT's on the bottom right side of the map. Uh, we've, I've lost count of how many overlords have been killed so yeah. far here. But yeah. I don't know when we're going to have an overlord come in here and clean out that DT. Yeah, this is this is getting just so rough for Shine. I'm looking at this tasteless, and, and for me personally, it looks like he might be doing a massive drop, which is an okay idea, I think. But it's like either that or maybe set up a position where Snow could like sloppily attack. You know, like maybe Snow thinks like, okay, I'm ahead, I can go kill him. And then you you just put him through the meat grinder, right? Like maybe good spread lurkers or something. That was my idea for a comeback because it looks so hard here. But I think he's gonna do two drops at once, like one into the main and one into the third. Yeah, you could be right about that. This push is gonna come down here. You know, this is an unfortunate spot to have these lurker eggs. Yeah. This is like a really common way that Zergs die is they get hit when all their lurker eggs are somewhere uh -huh. and the hydras have to run and then it's like the lurkers will either die or they, the eggs have to be canceled and then you lose all the hydras. And um, I didn't think Sh uh, Snow was necessarily gonna push this quick, but he might just wanna push into the natural. Sometimes if Maybe. the Zerg hasn't done anything, because I mean, you know Snow's almost maxed out, he's at 161. It's like you, you make out of all the gateways two times and you're, you're full. Sure. Um, sometimes you just push the natural, especially if the, it's not on like a high ground. This is like a low ground position. Uh, you could just put Dragoons out there and blow up the, uh, the hatchery or... Oh my god, these Corsairs! Dude, storms, cannons, everything. Massive drop headed towards the main. Let's see if he gets anything done with this. Snow seems to be on top of everything. Yeah, it's never a good sign when the Zealots are already up here in yeah. the main. And, you know, I don't even know if Shine's going to stay in this game for too much longer, to be honest with you. It's looking pretty bad right now. This is, this is a one-sided game that we have been watching this entire time. It doesn't feel like any damage is being dealt. Look at the Corsairs absolutely massacring the Overlords. No real damage dealt. What's this going to be, a Lurker Drop? Yeah, you Lurker Drop's the third. It's it's a good idea. Yeah, like, I mean, These I, are the types of moves you need to try, but Snow is blocking literally <coughs> everything. Yeah, I mean, it, he's just shutting everything down. And the truth is, like, if Snow's having a pretty easy time pulling workers away. Um, oh, did he hide this? Oh, no, it's still attacking. I thought maybe he, like, tried to do a little <laughs> position trick. So, sometimes when there's a lot of stuff happening, yeah. you won't realize there's a Lurker there, and you can send your workers back, and they all die. But um, this is really just snow deflecting every little attempt from shine and shine should just dry up here he doesn't have a fourth he doesn't have additional tech all the drops failed you know it, there's there's no real way that i can see for him to really come back looks like he might try a drop again you know maybe if snow's out of position maybe you can pick off a nexus the temple archives i don't know it's it it just, it seems like Snow sitting here up 60 supply, having taken every fight better and on equal bases. Yeah. That doesn't sound beatable to me. No, I mean, look, this DT, it, you know, I was talking about it earlier, but just having one DT down there, it's so hard for the Zerg to deal with. If you get you know, the, the leg up on these fights, by the way, another big drop in here. I think this was a super high risk, high reward move. Oh my God, the Corsairs. No. They're everywhere. Well, that is a lot of Hydras, actually. So the Corsairs turn around there. He's going to have to bring more army back. And the Corsairs, yeah, they were over at the other location. Look at this. A group of Mutas flying in, picking off High Templars. I mean, Not this, a bad idea. This is pretty sick. 
I mean, that was actually a great play there by Shine. Yeah. Is it going to be enough? I don't know. I mean, this game has kind of turned on its head. This is not your typical PvZ. Normally, it's the Protoss trying to stop the Zerg from growing. This is like a role reversal where, like, Protoss is taking like, their fourth base now. Oh. And it's a slow fourth base. This is at 18 minutes. But, like, Snow is... When you start to see Zergs drop, you almost know they're going to just have to keep dropping. It's like a very specific uh, style of play where it's like, well, I don't have to really do anything now. As long as they're not expanding, I just have to survive. I tell you, I do like the, the combo of the mutas as well, but, you know, when you're when you're dropping that many units and you're making a ton of mutas twice, yeah. it just doesn't leave enough for your actual army. There's Look at how tiny the army is. It's just, it's not a size that can really battle with snow right now. One of the things, too, is when you're seeing a lot of drops like this, I found that sometimes if you just drop one DT on their main, they lose everything because their overlords are all over the place. Oh, yeah. They just will, like, have nothing to cover for that one thing. Um, so Zerg has to expand. The fourth base is not going to go down. Snow's been really thorough about checking everywhere um, for more overlords. Look at the, how nicely spread out everything is. Yeah. There's a couple Dragoons, Templars, and Zealots in each little spot. And that's all you need is the combination of those units working together uh, along with cannons. You should yeah. be fine. I tell you, this has been a, a rough game here for Shine. He is going to try another attack. I think he doesn't want to waste his time expanding because there's just like, it, 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 there's no way, right? Like four base snow will kill you. So he comes forward, has a bunch of lurkers in here, has like, this is his entire army he is supply blocked here once again, eating size storms all over everything. This game is over, Tasteless. This game is done, man. This is wild. Unbelievable domination I, I, for Snow tonight. I think we're going to see these Lurkers die, and we're going to see Shine leave. Yeah, there it is. Okay, GG. GG. Oh. Look at the look on Shine's Shine, face. Shine He's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not happy with that game. Well, you know, that was a, a very impressive win from Snow. Yeah. Snow just basically stopped all the little <laughs> crazy things that Shine's going to do. Yeah. And eventually Shine's like, well, I'm going to... I don't have a fourth base, I have no economy, and this Protoss is maxed out. Yeah, I, I mean, that about sums it up. Uh, Snow advances in first place. Uh, so far in this ASL, easily the most dominating player. Oh, yeah. Looked better than everyone else in the tournament thus far. Yeah, look, I, I think he looks better now than even before. Yeah. Which is crazy to say. He's been to the finals before, but he looks even stronger. Yeah. It's like a new level of Protoss. Um, and look, that was a tricky early game there from Shine. That was a little weird. Yeah. Like, I, I, I can only imagine lots of questions coming out of the mind of the Snow there, like, as far as what's happening. So, this was the moment. And by the way, everything here was somewhat standard. You know, yeah. three base, a Hydra. It looked like the Zerg might do something else, but he just looked in here and said, oh, there's two Overlords. I'll just kill this off. And suddenly, the DT that's basically, it's like a control play usually to stop the fourth base. And, it's kind of an honesty check, too. Everything fell apart. I think Shine recovered pretty nicely, but it's pretty rare nowadays to see Protosses really get in and do damage to Zergs just on three bases. Yeah. Zergs are so good at turtling now, um, and this is such a commonplace thing in the meta. It just goes to show you how strong Snow is. This was this was truly impressive, and this is part of the reason as well why I was feeling like it kind of looked like Beast. Like he's always been the master of this yeah. type of move. He's like the best Corsair DT yeah. Zealot guy. And you know, I, I I feel like if you could combine Snow and Beastu together, like that's that would be crazy. Like you literally have to get Rain to come back to stop him. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the only thing that could ever stop a hybrid yeah. of you're watching Group E of the round of 24 of ASL 17 as we have our first player advancing through to the round of 16 today in Snow. Congratulations. Thank you. You came prepared to have a good showing today and a good showing you had indeed. Moving on to the next round. You must be pleased with yourself now that you're back in the round of 16 after a bit of a break. Yeah, I'm, I'm as happy as I would normally be making it into the round of 8 or round of 4. I wonder if that's because you managed to show the kind of performance today a lot of people expected from you. I was under the impression you were full of confidence today as I watched you play. How did things go all in all? 
I didn't go into the games with anything set in stone, so instead I followed the flow of the game without much forethought. Was it because of this relaxed mindset, perhaps? <laughs> my micro was good. I do make micro mistakes in my practice as well, but today things just went well. In your first game against Speed, you showed us your trademark shuttle galore. Going as far as clearing out mines at the 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock using your shuttle without an observer? When I saw that, I thought, wow, this guy has some confidence in his skills. What do you think? I just didn't get an observer in time, so I guess I just wanted to show off. Um, my nexus was late at that point too, and I wanted to build an ASAP. Even if I would missed micro, I had to do it. The fans here at the studio are giving you a thumbs up with uh, how well you played. Similarly, in the game against Shine, you said you went with the flow. Shine is a player who just keeps attacking relentlessly. Uh, you must have thought that as long as you manage to block his attacks, uh, you would have a good chance to win, is that right? Yeah, but even if you know that, he still manages to get some good punches in. I was particularly focused today and made an effort not to miss anything, anywhere. Relaxed, but ever so focused, is now we can do all but expect you to show up even sturdier in the round of 16. What are your goals? Are you already concerned? I'm always aware that I can beat anyone, but I can also lose to anyone. Having done this well in the round of 24, I could also soar high in the round of 16. I'll just do my best to keep rolling. Got it. We'll keep a close eye as you progress through this season. Congratulations once more. Do you have anything to say to your fans or colleagues? Yes, I would like to thank the boss at KDA University or KDA Starcraft University as well as our students who showed up to the studio today. And thanks to Barracks, Ample and Sharp for practicing with me. Congratulations once more and we'll see you at the group selection ceremony. Thank you. And here you have your first place finisher of Group E making it through to the round of 16. We'll be back with a losers match between Speed and Mong in just a few.
We are back, and we're ready for this TVT artosis. These two Terrans that got Whoa. butchered, one by a Protoss, one by a Zerg. <laughs> and now we're going to put them together and figure out who is going to survive here. Shine, of course, is waiting in the final match for the winner of this. Yeah, yeah. So basically what we're doing is we're going to make them play a TVT on a two-player map, which is a little bit painful, but not as painful as being fed to Shine afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this this could actually be a really cool game. Uh, Blitz, why we did watch an, one TVT already in this tournament, on yeah, it. yeah, and it was pretty interesting. It was like that Tengu game, I remember. Um, and like you just didn't reinforce, and Sock ran him over the ball on the left hand side. I remember. But it seems like you set up a little bit in the center, and then send everything to the left side, and just make sure drops don't come. Like though, that's like the. Blitz Y looks extremely simple because of that. So I think what we'll see here is either a very cheesy build or battle cruisers. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a map where you could very easily cut it in half. It's too sure. thin. It's too thin. Yeah, it's it's very narrow, and so once maps get you know all the pieces get cut up and they've staked out the territories, battle cruisers 100% could be a thing. Um, all right, we're going to get into this match here, Mong versus Speed. I think maybe Mong's slightly favored, but yeah. Speed is looking really good. Both these guys uh, going into this losers match on the back of a huge humiliation. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see how they perform uh, this time around. Okay, we got Mung here in the top and Speed in the bottom. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm excited actually. Like, I, I think this map will be solved in TVT very, very, very quickly. Because I hadn't put a lot of thought into it, then we watched that one game and it's like, oh yes, of course. You can't attack through the center, like uh, the right side rather, right? Dropships obviously would be very strong, so you do have to think about that. But other than that, it's a very thin area on the left hand side. If you look at 9 o'clock over to the middle of the map, that's the width of the map, basically. Okay? Yeah. So, because, again, if you set up two, three siege tanks on the high ground thing in the middle, nothing can come through because it's so right. thin. So, all you have to do is make a strong siege line there, and the map is literally cut in half. This, in fact, this might be, as far as Terran versus Terran goes, the quickest map ever in the history of pro gaming for being cut in half. Yeah. Like, I honestly think that around 140 supply... That'll be it. There won't be any way to attack each other anymore. Yeah, I think you're probably right. You know, every time you make these maps, or whoever whoever makes the maps, the, 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 it's crazy what it does to certain matchups. And mirror matchups are no exception to that. Yeah. Um, personally, I love playing on maps with just two spawns. I, I have a lot of fun uh, doing that. I'm glad that we still keep maps with many spawns open. Mm -hmm. and available like I, this is actually something I don't really like as much about StarCraft 2 when I cast it is it's like there's so many just two spawn maps yes it, it, everything like, <laughs> yeah it's almost like what happens if you give pro gamers too much power is like they're like we'll get rid of all the yeah. you know, random make all the maps look exactly the same and make yeah. them all two player yeah and it's let's like, just have all the same game over and over yeah and I'm like well I think what we should be doing is, is having some maps with some core features and test them out but always try to bring new ideas in play. Yeah. And I think out of all the RTSs, StarCraft 1 is so above and beyond the best when it comes to maps. Without any doubt. The maps are so different. They are yeah. so incredibly different. You do get ones that are similar, right? Like, Retro is a remake of, of Fighting Spirit. Yeah. Right? They kind of made Fighting Spirit more modern, and it is better now. Uh, but, yeah, that's that's what it is. So, uh, 
I do love that aspect of StarCraft for sure. And I, I love the fact that Afrika TV literally doesn't care if the pro gamers don't want to play a crappy map. Like, I, I don't want to play Troy, and they put Troy in, right? And it's like, no one wants to play Troy, except yeah. Protoss players. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, they don't care. And well, that's that actually makes it more entertaining for us. Well, yeah, I mean, I think pros should be consulted on some level, but at some point in time, you gotta go, well, no, this is like a conflict of interest. Yeah. You know, it's- Make a, make a good product for the fans. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Make, make a good show, bring out some good ideas. And honestly, like, I remember when I was a kid, it was so hard for me to pick up a new map. I remember, like, I, I, yeah. I like played Lost Temple for a year. And then I, when I started, like, following competitive scenes, I was like, wait a minute, what is this map? <laughs> what is this map? I'm like, so yeah. you guys play on this map for, like, three months and stop? Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. Are you crazy? And it was like, I, I was like, I don't know if I can ever do that. Like, <laughs> I, I, I wasn't confident enough, you know? Sure. But once you get on, you know, you play ten different maps, you've built up so much more. Um, of like a handle on the game. For sure. You know? You learn different things on different maps. Yeah. Like, honestly, you know, one of the things that's funny to me, and I know island maps suck, but I'm glad I had the island map experience. Yeah. I'm glad I had those games on Dire Straits. And for some of the younger players learning StarCraft, they cannot function with islands or semi-island oh, maps. Oh, that's true, yeah. You know, they never yeah, had yeah. that experience. So they're like, what is going on here? Yeah, we know? played that plenty, man. I know all about that. Everybody from <laughs> Dire Straits and what is like, Neo Hall of Valhalla and yeah. all these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was it? Estrella was another yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's good because you, you get to get a handle on those kinds of games. Yeah, it's, uh, I do love, I do love that about it. But then, uh, you know, sometimes you do get maps where the, it gets solved pretty quickly or something. and. Uh, maybe not not the best balance. It does happen. It does happen. Absolutely. It's part of the game. Uh, yeah. Now, looking at this, Mong has made two vultures, so he's going to run in, and he's actually getting really good shots here. Excellent micro from Mong. Now, he's going to get four SCVs repairing. Yes! Oh, my God! That was really good. <laughs> if, dude, if one SCV... Artosis' eyeballs almost popped out of his head while he cast yeah, that. So, so let me just say this, right? If one SCV... Had, like, because he stopped the SCVs that were coming out to mine. If one of them had been on top of the vulture and made anything dance, Mong would be the game winner right now. Yeah. Because he would have killed the vulture and then he would have killed all those SCVs. Why is this tank going across? Is this good? Yes. One tank? Well, now that he sees this tank, he'll turn around. Okay. Uh, or maybe he sits it here and then rallies into it. But, like, if. If, like, there he saw two vultures come up, right, when he had one, so he knows that the add-on is later. And some people go no add-on for a long time. So if you have no add-on for a long time and just vultures, the tank can come across and attack a little bit. Especially if, like, those damaged vultures didn't go all the way back. Maybe they aren't repaired yet. You can maybe pick them off. So he was just looking for that. The barracks saw it. He turns around. And, uh, yeah, it's turning into vulture tank very, very quickly here. And I don't imagine we'll see any real damage. It's like they should clog up the center a little bit, and then we'll see vultures set on the left. Is it worth it to kill the eggs? Yes. On the ramp? You definitely want to kill the eggs. Why Why is that? Because it'll bug? Yeah, the mech units going through that small of an area, they screw up a lot. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Like I didn't, you I didn't always, realize it's... You kill the eggs well, as quickly as why you did, can. Why do they have the eggs there? Oh, it's so that you can hold your ramp. Like, let's say that a nine pool comes. You'll lose if those eggs are Oh, there. okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, when I saw and, him attacking that, I was like, huh, is that really worth it, or, you yeah. know? And I think, like, you know, like, let's say you're playing, like, a, a, a PvP or something, you might need to put Zealot, a Zealot there or something, right? Yeah. So, like, there's there's a few different things, but definitely, like, those eggs, like, need to be cleared by Terran uh, when they're playing mech. So in this matchup or against Protoss, and then if they aren't there against Zerg, everyone would nine pull every game. Right. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, we have Mong on the uh, out on the map. He's got some mines planted over here. Speed is going to chase him back. Yeah. This right side of the map, it looks so uncomfortable to navigate through, especially in TVT where, like, you know, uh, the best way to take out a line of siege tanks is to kind of flank it and come in from an angle where you can hit a bunch of them at once. It's a very narrow space. 
Yes, yes. It, it, they did kind of choke that up by putting their tanks up there, and now we do see the vultures around the map a little bit. Speed sends his three vultures in. Three is a great number because it one-shots uh, SCDs, but he actually ends up splitting them a little bit. Uh, he sees the starport with the add-on, which is pretty huge because you don't know if they're going to go for that that early. You don't necessarily have to go for a starport that quickly, so that's like a great find from Speed. He's like mines in the middle. This is a very good game. Like they both, they both kind of done everything that they need to do in this this early portion. We've got more and more vultures uh, coming down here. It's kind of an arms race for the time being. The dropship's going to be um, produced, so uh, Mong's going to have the opportunity to probably try to drop vultures in the main and try to push in there. Well, a couple of Goliaths here are going to kill off these vultures. Mong having the same idea as Speed there. Maybe they got the idea from Speed there with the three <laughs> vultures coming in. Uh, Clearly a fan of TY's games yeah, from the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we're going to have to see how he wants to position against the possible vulture drops coming in. Look at that. Sneaking another three down and around. Yeah, you, you'll love to see it. Of course, three vultures can easily one-shot an SCV. Um and we don't have the third base yet. It does feel like one of those games where anybody who would take a third base right away would end up getting in some trouble. Now, it's not a lot of vultures that he's sending down here, but you've got to be careful because, if, you know, well, I guess it doesn't matter if they're both doing it to each other, but if one guy sends a couple of vultures to do run-bys too many times, you will not have enough. You'll get overwhelmed. Yeah, you do not want to get too far behind on those vultures. But if you have some extra tanks, sometimes you'll be all right. Now, here comes that vulture drop. Ooh, and nasty block. Look at that. Yeah, that was very, very good. It doesn't look like any real damage will be dealt here. Again, none of this is really the end of the world for either side because once you get a decent amount of, like, tanks and goliaths, the vultures aren't as powerful. Uh, but it's kind of interesting to see, like, the, the differences, right? They're both taking their thirds exactly where you would expect. They both have mines on the left. But Mong is trying to get some dropship harassment, whereas Speed is mostly just running around with vultures. So we got some more mines being planted down here. The um, third base, they're both mirroring each other, continuing to expand uh, towards the center here. I am really curious these the, on the right side of the center if those bases are going to become uh, important here. Yeah. These kind of island locations. Yeah, that's that's a wild one. Like, I think never early because it's going to be too much I think it's the break. last place you go to, yeah. but eventually it will be a place that will be fought over. Yeah. Like, we could get a game where it's like battle cruisers like trying to get into that area that's and what I, cover that. I think that's actually what is supposed to happen here. <laughs> yeah, I think, <laughs> I think so. so. Really. Ooh, very good setup here. I even like the depots kind of blocking, so it's a, you have to go through that center area and yeah. get by the tank and glide. Well, clearly this map was designed so that you could sneak drops up in there, but the yes. fact that he just preempts it and... The fact that they're both sharing this right side of the map because of the way the map is designed, it means like it's a very predictable spot to, to drop into. Yeah. Now, they're both starting to get up there and supply a little bit, both nearing 100. Uh, I think right now what you're, you're thinking about is making sure that the drops can't come in. Siege maybe two tanks right there where we see Mong with only one siege just to make sure nothing comes through. Right. And now you have to move everything to the left side. This is, we were talking about this before with Sokka's Tengu, uh, and now we're talking about it here, and I see that speed is just doing it really slowly. Like, it's a, that was a very clear time to move out and do it. Like, all the early harassment was basically done, and Mong was quicker to move to the center. And now, look at this. This is actually a huge deal. That is a more forward position which means that 9 o'clock right now could be taken from by Mong, but not by speed. And on both the right side and the left side of the map, there's bases where it doesn't obviously go to one side. Not all maps are made like that, but in TBT especially, you want to watch for those. Because whoever's controlling the, the shared base locations is probably long-term going to win. Yeah. Yeah. If you have one more base in, in TBT, it's almost unlosable. Uh, now, I want to talk about what, what needs to be done here. <laughs> So, Mong, like, he's flying around, uh, well, no, Speed is flying around with the Wraith a little bit and, like, getting some scouting done and stuff like that, but Mong has a better position in the center. If Mong just continually reinforces, because he was already getting a science facility, right, so he's going to go towards plus two, but if he just continually reinforces this line, gets a few missile turrets up, maybe goes into dropships as a counterplay to dropships, the onus is completely on Speed at that point. Like, speed has to do something. And I just don't know what he could do if you just rally your tanks to the middle. 
Yeah. How do you break right. that? No, I, I don't know. I mean, I think you're 100% right. But if he starts attacking his stuff, that's where I could see speed maybe coming back, right? Because you get a little bit sloppy, you lose a feature. Maybe, maybe he gets the center back. What is the, the center right? It's not a command center. Is that a barracks floating there, or is that actually a CC? Oh, I think it's just like a floating, maybe an eBay and a okay, barracks right. type of thing. I'm just, I'm, I'm eyeing that side of the map, and I'm like, did yeah. he actually sneak in there? Like, it feels like it would have been a little bit too soon. Yeah, I think it's important to just kind of watch the air spaces, right? Yeah. Like, it, less about the expansions right now, more about like just making sure he doesn't fly up the news main. And look, Mong is starting to bank dropships. Hopefully, for speed's sake, he is as well. Because, it, like, normally you don't go directly to BC. Normally you go dropship into BC. And that would be, especially if you're, like, a little bit ahead, probably. But, oh, oh what am I dude. looking at? No! They got aggro. Oh, didn't mean to do they that. got fish right out of there. Yeah. So he loses, like, four or five tanks. I, I was about to say, like, Speed's going to have a timing attack here because his plus two is going to finish first. That's oh. the one thing that he's got going for him. Mong okay. doesn't have plus one attack yet. And Mong Speed doesn't does. have plus he one? He does not have plus one attack. Oh my god, he does science facility, you didn't have plus one? That's crazy. We need to click on a unit, but I am, I mean, earlier I saw that it wasn't there. Okay. I don't know if it's yeah. there now, but. Okay, he does okay, have he plus does one right He does now. have it now. So but does Speed have plus two right now? He will have plus two before. Yeah. Okay. That's... Assuming that he's immediately started the next upgrade. Yeah, that's yeah. a big deal. That's a big deal. Like, if you have plus two right before your opponent, you can let your ta vultures tank a bit and you'll just blow some tanks up. Yeah. But if you siege enough tanks there, it's still going to be very hard to break. Okay, big pickups here. He's going to be moving out. Um, Speed is going to try to come through the narrow area up here. I, there might actually be not much to defend here. It's one of those things where it's such a bad idea to move through here yes. that you can, <laughs> players will almost leave it exposed. And so he's going to have to drop literally just to try to save this position. Now, I think Mong shuts this down, but kind of a scary moment there. Yeah, yeah, like, it, it, you really need just two or three tanks, and then they'll never come through. He left one, so he started to come through, but it gets blocked. There is a drop from Mong here in the top left, and it's annoying, but it's definitely not the end of the world. This is, you know, he'll, he'll clean it even with just vultures. Maybe he loses some SCVs, whatever. As long as Mong controls that center area and doesn't take critical damage anywhere, it's still his advantage. We're getting more and more... Um... We're getting to the point where there's not a whole lot of places to move to. You know what I mean? The map is kind of all tied up. I don't know if we're going to get the Battle Cruisers yet, but it's starting to feel more and more like one of those games. Yeah, yeah. I really think that unless there's a crazy early game cheese, every pro Terran versus Terran should hit BC on this map without a problem because all you have to do is siege the center and block drops. It's very straightforward. The map is very thin. It's not hard to make a bunch of turrets, lay some mines, whatever you have to do. Yeah, and, and once the turrets really start to fill up, and you, when you have this many bases, by the way, the minerals are so easy. Yeah. You're, ne you're never starved on minerals. It's always a matter of gas. I need to get more gas. I have to get uh, as much as possible. Um, but the fact of the matter is that uh, Mong is still locked speed out of the 9 o'clock base. We don't have anybody yep. really capturing the island yet. The island's going to be uh, pretty hype. He did drop two SCVs there to start building turrets. Yes. So I don't know if he's going to expand there or he just wants turrets for anti-drop. I'm not sure. Well, I think it's almost like a placeholder yeah. for the base later on. Like, you know if this game lasts long enough, something's going to have to come down around that drop. Look at this Oh, I can't position. believe he's dropping What? Are you, no. There's not even anywhere to unload anything. Yeah, there's not. There's that not was... any surface area. Yeah. Are that those... actually matters. You can't unload somewhere where there's no room to unload. So that was... Definitely a bit of a mistake. Like, I think he could have dealt with that a lot better. I and can't believe that little wedge there. I didn't appreciate how small that area on the map was. That's yeah. kind of crazy. Yeah. That, w that was a very high IQ place to drop there from Hong, I think. Very good yeah. idea. Uh, the SCVs come up. He will be able to break through that. I mean, some reasonable economic damage from these drops in the corners on both sides. But, again, nothing that feels like game ending or anything. Ooh! Dude, the mines he put down there. That's pretty sick, actually, from speed. This is wild, man. Okay, SCVs are being transferred. By the way, it's important to remember it's not just like who has the base. In TVT, a lot of times, the, the most important bases go back and forth. Someone has it for a little bit, and then the drops come in, and it gets wiped out, and then they have it, and then another counter drop comes in. Mm. So 
when you get those those bases where it's not clear who it's supposed to go to, like it's a shared location, you need to mine that up as fast as possible. You need to drain that place of the resources as quickly as possible so that yeah. they, if they reclaim it later, they don't get the value from it. It's a very good point, Taste. It's 100% true. Like, it, you should send a ton of SCDs to a base like that. The thing is, the one thing I guess you could consider is they are more likely to try to attack there and break there. So maybe you lose SCDs, but, like, it's, I think you're right that you should just really try to, try to do that. Now... It looks like that, that right-hand side might be something Mong is thinking about right now. He's actually... That is not a very big siege line in the center for Mong. Has he overdone this? Like, has he has he overexpanded? Look at this drop coming out. Speed might just break through the center. Yeah, but he's going to drop over here at this base. Now, now, getting siege tanks over here is crazy. Yeah. Because that's right where the natural is. And this actually gives you an angle into the main base that probably doesn't really have any defense. Like, the yeah. defense is all towards the top. And now, it's a little bit of a base trade. Like, they're both killing one expansion. Speeds is more important right now. Uh, but he is getting that center area, which is super, super powerful. Maybe he can attack the top left. Look at this. He's sending units in. There's nothing there for Mong. This is pretty crazy, man. Like... Uh, Mong is losing control of all the resource locations on the map. The entire left side of the map has been shattered. But I, I'm so interested with these tanks up here. He can actually shell the main from here. Look at this. This is insane. He can hit the turrets and the Goliaths and everything. Yeah, yeah. You notice that um, Speed has left a bunch of units in there because he's actually now very afraid of drops going into his main base. Right? Those missile turrets he set up are not going to be able to do anything from that angle. So this is a very good setup. He's leaving some Goliaths for anti-dropship. He's leaving some siege tanks in there, so if you do drop, you're going to be in trouble. And look at this, Mong now dropping on the mineral base even here for speed. This is a sick TVT, man. The Goliaths are going to shred that command center. We've got the tanks coming back here for speed. He needs to try to save this as quick as he possibly can. I don't know about those tanks that were over at that third base for, for Mong, but yeah, they're still here. Okay, so mm. this positionally is a huge headache. Even though speed has wiped out a lot of the income, um, this is like a really tough spot to get out of. And the truth is, he can hit the main from there. He can also use that as a launching pad to have more tanks go into the main. You can lose TVT, yeah. especially on a map like this. I don't think you could just make factories everywhere on the map, right? No. Like if you get in the main and just kill their factories off, you can win that way too. Yeah, yeah that, that would probably instantly win the game. There's not, there's some buildable terrain at 12 and six, but it's not that much. Uh, now the dropships flying down. There's a lot of other dropships here though. You have to be careful about this because like, this is the proper way to clear a lot of this, is if you have, like, similar amounts of dropships and you drop everything out. But it looks like maybe Speed didn't have that much loaded. And now Mong is pushing into the natural. And if he cuts this off, you have no actual circulation between your bottom left and your main. Yeah. Like, Speed needs to do... He needs a counter somehow, and I don't see a good way to do it. Well, the other thing is, yeah, he can't get to protect his other bases. They're both not, they don't have a lot to work with right now. Even forcing that CC to lift is pretty huge. Um, but Speed needs to basically break free from this position. And that would probably mean taking dropships and dropping right on top of this. But there's a lot of Goliaths over here. Yeah. Um, I feel like, I don't know, TVT is such a fascinating matchup in how it works. Like, what Speed did was good, but it also created an imbalance on the map where then Mong could drop in this position. Mm -hmm. And Mong is still getting value out of the drop that he did, where Speed has kind of lost control of the map. Look at this. Oh my god. Mong taking these bases. Mong is very close to a victory here. He's setting up like an anti-drop zone. He has plenty of units at the third base still. Maybe that can get cleared. Okay, okay. This is this is a step in the right direction for speed. He's definitely still losing. It's definitely still a very tough position. But regaining this area is strong. Mong coming down with a lot of units, a lot of drop ships here. He's up 45 supply right now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Tasteless. <laughs> okay, here we go. He's going to just try to circumvent the whole tank position of the front. He's going to go right into the bane here. So much is unloading. We have actually speed unloading his dropships as well. If Mong... Uh, oh, actually, I don't think Mong can quite pull this off. Yeah. I can't quite see what's under the, the player card at the bottom, but I think yeah. there's some tanks there. Yeah, just a, just a few. Uh, he is going to bring up more units, so this might be enough now if he drops it right on top. But more dropships coming down. If he has a ton of units here, maybe he can block once again. 
kind of crazy. Uh, you know, when you see, unless you have like a really big advantage, if you're trying to drop and they have drop ships there, it's like the counter drop is actually the best way to clear it. Yeah. It's so like if you're both dropping at about the same time, it's like everything's just going to blow up, right? Right. So, and whoever's territory it's in is probably going to have a slight advantage there. But right now, Mong starting to push up into Speed's base. Speed with very little left over. I think we're at the tail end of this game. It feels like it. I mean, the factory, as you can see, tanks are spawning and then tanks are dying. We've got Speed coming back here. He's going to try to scoop up all of these tanks over here. He needs to save his man. You know, it's funny how StarCraft games can end. Most of the time, it's like, well, he didn't get another base up. Yeah. But in this case, it's like, he's going to lose all of his infrastructure in his main. Yeah. You, you have to keep your main up. That's like one of the ways to just take a victory in Terran vs. Terran if you just shut down the main base. Right. Especially on a map like this where, you, you know, sometimes you lose your main base late on a four-player map and you can rebuild it elsewhere and maybe still mm -hmm. win. A tough position, but maybe. Here, like you said, there's not really a lot of build over terrain. We don't have a big bank or anything. Mong is up at twice the supply. And yeah, okay, it looks like speed. He's This is his Hail Mary. He's gonna try to drop into the main base of Mong. It's not gonna work. Yeah, well, he's dropping the drop. That's gonna be that. GG, hey, great run there from speed. Yeah. I'm glad we got to see a little bit more of uh... Uh, you know, the great abilities he's got. I know the game one that he had today was rough. Same for Mong. Yeah. Um, these guys are going to be exhausted going into the Shine match. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. I hope that Shine uses that against them somehow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Mong is going to go into that final match. It's still a very tough one for him, you know? Uh, I don't know if he would have felt better against Snow because Snow is so good, but his Terran versus Protoss is a lot better. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but... I am kind of favoring Shine coming up in this last match. Yeah. Very cool. Um, well, we hope to see Speed again. We've had a lot of uh, fresh faces here for this ASL. So far, the uh, the veterans are continuing to dominate in a game that is basically the oldest eSport. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Time yeah. is on your side, you know? Uh, unless we're still counting Donkey Kong, this is it. Yeah, this is, this is it. And we're not counting Donkey Kong. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> You know, if we were Donkey Kong casters, we'd be pissed right yeah, now. Yeah. We'd be millionaires <laughs> or <just. laughs> um, So, yeah, we'll do a quick recap here of that game. Um, I assume they're going to get the push where he breaks out on the left side of the map and Mong drops here. Yeah, the, the drop into that base was so powerful. Obviously, losing the center is, is a bit rough. Uh, he should have had more, more tanks there in the center. Like, really, that is one of the most important areas. I yeah. think the correct vision for this map is you siege the center ridiculously, then tons of turret mine tank everywhere with dropships blocking, and then you think about battle cruisers and the bases on the right. Yeah. Right? Like, you have to cross all your T's and dot all your I's, and he just didn't have a lot of defense everywhere. Right. In fact, part of the reason he had no units here is he moved them up through the center bridge, which you should never do. Yeah. Because literally two or three tanks hold everything. Yeah. But he was like, oh, there's only one tank. Let me do it. It's like, dude, where's his rally? Where's his dropships? You're never going to break. That. Well, it's Come easy on. to recover, too. I mean, it's, it's funny. It's like such yeah. a bad area to move that people kind of neglect it. It yeah. makes no sense. But then he's like, there's an opportunity here. Yeah. And uh, Well, that's I think that's what cost him this base. If he had four tanks siege there, yeah. Mong doesn't drop it. Yeah. Staying hydrated here. Mong. Always, man. Always. Always. The giant Picari sweat. Oof. Um, okay, guys, well, we're going to go to a break. Coming back, the final game of the evening.
만들어 봐. 네 의자에 꿀려. 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 For Bong's sake, I hope he's going to have a better game here. This is a rematch, by the way. Yep. Shine did obliterate Mong yeah. in their TVZ last time. But honestly, like Mong had like some pretty clever moves, but then um, he, his natural defenses got fractured. 
and it was basically all downhill from there. Yeah, it, it was it was kind of wild because that move out that got two overlords and he killed like several views. I'm like, oh, I, I think you showed the this game so far to a Terran player and they'd be like, oh, this this is fine, you know, this looks good. Yeah. And then Shine, like, I don't know, man, like he. It took off his dirty sock and shoved it in Mong's mouth and handcuffed him <laughs> and beat him with a paddle. Like, <coughs> it's, he just, he brutalized him. Uh, so, anyways, uh, we're going into Apocalypse, which is definitely a map that has its own problems. This could be, yeah. like, an insane game. Like, Terrans generally like to wall here, so that opens up floor pool as a possibility. I don't think he'll do it because I, I think, think I think so. he can win straight up. But uh, there's there's a lot of things to talk about with the way that this map is shaped and where Manga. It, it's is a good map. I think everybody who's been following StarCraft the last year or two is familiar with it now. Um, yeah. I think it's made for some great ladder games too. Um, it's a pretty good map. It's I, a good map. I enjoy it. I do enjoy it. It's a little bit tough for Terran. Like Terran has kind of a bad record on it so far, uh -huh. but like it's still it's a. It's interesting with its shapes, like yeah, the way yeah. that it's laid out. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be hopping into this match. This is Mong versus Shine uh, here in Group B. Again, the winner goes on to the round of 16, and the loser's out of the ASL. Okay, uh, we've got Mong here at 12 o'clock, Shine in the bottom right. Real quick reminder, guys, um, if you want to support us in, in our mission here to bring StarCraft to, to the English-speaking world, please go to patreon.com forward slash ASL English. That's right. Check us out. Your support <laughs> is appreciated. We love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you much, guys. You are the best. So thank you for, for all that. Now, uh, Apocalypse. Okay, so... There's some issues about it that are like kind of funny, right? The uh, the natural, like the the place that you walk out of your main to the front of your natural, is flanked on one side by your command center and one side by like dead airspace, like right here. See this? That area can be a little bit tricky. Now this spawn isn't as bad. Like the spawn shine is in, it actually gets really hard because you have to walk so far vertically there where you need like turrets in this weird area that you don't normally need on maps. Yeah. So it's not as bad there, but the main mineral patch is here. Uh, you have to be very careful about mutilous harassment there because it's like n on many maps in many positions, your minerals are up like against a wall in the main base. Almost every map is like that. So you just build some missile turrets there and it's like, okay, the mutas can't go anywhere. Here, like, half of them are against a wall and half of them are against nothing. So, it's a little bit harder to cover things with missile turrets. Yeah. So, you definitely got to watch out for that. Um, shine so far has not really been the crazy, deceptive, sneaky shine uh, I'm used to casting. Which is fine, by the way. Yeah. Um, he's just gone for some very, very standard play. Uh, I guess he was, like, a little bit sneaky and kind of weird with uh, his PvZ play. But it did ultimately boil down to just kind of a standard PvZ game. Um, this game, he is going for an extractor in a pool what? before the what? hatchery. What? Okay, I literally, while I was talking, my eyes started to dart around. I'm like, there must be a hatchery. <laughs> yeah. There must be a hatchery. Yeah, so he yeah. went for gas pool first. This gives you a very quick layer. Very, 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 very fast layer. Fast layer means fast mutas. Unless That's Unless there's right. going to be something else weird. Yeah. I mean, it could be fast lurkers as well. I could never want to... I want to leave all options open when I'm casting Shine's games. Yeah. And as Mon gets there, he realizes, okay, this is definitely a pool first. And he'll get yeah. down and see the uh, gas mining already. Uh, and let's see if he starts the layer immediately. Okay, so that is a 236 layer. Now, against this, if you want to go Marine Medic, it's pretty much generally agreed upon that you have to go one Barracks Academy here. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. You, you actually, it's... The mutas are so fast. Well, the tech, the layer tech is so fast that you don't have time to get the second barracks. Like, you have to actually just instantly tech up uh, because, like, if you don't get that academy quickly, this could be Lurker and you just don't know, you know? Yeah. It's just, it's well, so fast. And if you go for the second barracks, your scans don't come out in time. Right, yeah. I mean, you've got to be ready for anything. Yeah, um, and there it is. This isn't the comfiest um, position for Terran. 
like there's a lot of anxiety around the early game here <laughs> where you're just like okay we need to like cross the finish line we need to get past whatever fast tech this is going to be um interesting only has was that one on gas uh i actually i didn't notice it, it just finished so like he'll probably just add more on okay i was curious if there's because I, I don't know these this yeah build, no uh, you order at all you generally just put them put them on the gas right away but uh yeah the anyways you know the one racks a cad like he, this will give him some flexibility. He'll certainly add a second racks, and we'll see if he goes for a third or not. Three racks is the most that you could do with a build like this, but you have to start your uh, eBay by like four minutes and 30 seconds or so, yeah. which is like super fast as well. It's, it's a little bit tricky. You really, you have to nail everything because if he goes mutas, they're just gonna be there so fast. So the Spire's about halfway done. Second extractor coming down here. Now, by the way, when you do stuff this fast, the Zerg does not have the cleanest economy. No. Off of this. Like this, you don't just get things fast without sacrifice. So, Shine's gonna have the mutas out really quickly here, but we need to see how much damage is actually gonna be dealt. Yeah. Because if Mong holds this, it's gonna be an awkward mid game for the Zerg. Yeah, and he's he's nailing everything so far. Like he started his eBay with plenty of time. He started with his academy with plenty of time. Uh, this SCV is super valuable, and he's actually doing a little bit of a push out. Now, there's already one sunken, so this is actually going to deny the scout as well, which is kind of nice. And with one sunken, you can't really push across with that small army. Now, Mong is going to have to get some scanners and just check the tech. He saw everything at the natural, so he needs one scan in the main, but he'll have to build turrets. What this looks like is a mutilus calling. Yeah. Okay. It really, really, really looks I like that. I feel like this this style of play was really popular right when we moved to Korea. Yeah. I, like I saw I this a lot. Right. I was I was like, is that is is this what everybody's gonna do? Is it some yeah. kind of this crazy all in where you just try to rip the? It was apart? Shine's style actually when he was a new pro. Yeah. Yeah, it was. That's actually a good point, and which is right around the time that we we went to Korea. Uh, now, when you're doing a build like this, there are two things I want to point out. One, you have to basically build turrets nonstop. Two, this is something that I think Sharp figured out. You should add a third barracks against this. Interesting. People, we used to just hold it with two racks most of the time. We, the Terran players. I know, I love it. <laughs> I know, I know. We, as the group, but, had to fight the Zerg. Yeah. And it was it was like common, commonly thought that you should uh, go factory before your third racks here. And he actually does do that. Now, Sharp adds a third racks against specifically builds like this and like I actually think he nailed it I think it's the right way to do it so we'll see if Mong actually has enough here now a lot of turrets have been made for in that main base he's got two here look at this this is this is scary man yeah I mean he's right over this eBay um, there's an upgrade coming here but obviously the eBay also lets you make turrets this is gonna force Terran to try to engage there's, a, there's sort of this interesting dance the mutas and the Marines have to do against each other we're like you want to hit the Marines as they're running away, and then as they stim at you, you want to pull back. Um, but look, so far, I mean, Mong's looking okay. He's looking really good, actually. You just see the uh, Observer jumping around and seeing where he's adding turrets. He's making one there, he's making one here, and he's making one at the command center. This is exactly what I was talking about. You have to literally make turrets non-stop against this. If you are not constantly making them, the Mutalisks will overpower you. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. He's you're doing a great job here against this infantry. Yeah. You, you got to be careful. You need to fight near your turrets as well. The eBay, like, I think he's going to be able to... Yeah, yeah, he might not want to start another eBay down here. Maybe. Now, some more Raxes are getting started. I believe we have a Starport there. Two Starport? Okay, so he's definitely going to go towards Valkyries. Oh, by the way, guys, when you do this style of play, uh, you can't get a third base easily. That's another one of the things you're giving up. You know, most of the games oh, we yeah. see, there's mutas flying around, but there's also a third hatchery coming, and and lurker tech. Now, I don't know how far away lurker tech is here. He might not even have it dead. <laughs> no, he's he's trying to just win off of this. Like yeah. this is this is a mute all in, right? Like, but Mong has identified that and he's countered it super super well. Yeah, and that eBay is the target. He wants to try to fish those marines back up here. Uh, this, I think this looks very good for Mong right now. Like, okay, he does have the Hydralis Den. Now, there's one thing that I can imagine that could end up bringing Shine back in the game if things go wrong, right? Because if Valkyries start popping out and Mong is not on the edge of death. Oh, I thought he was making two Starports. I was wrong about that. It's one Starport. But uh, 
if if Mong is not on the edge of death as those Valkyries are coming out, uh, you might. Oh, it's a science facility. I thought it was a barracks. <laughs> That's so funny. I, I, yeah, no, I, I, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm like really caught off guard here because I, I feel like a, a Valkyrie is really needed here, but yeah, maybe because he figures there's the the. Lurker's coming out, that he needs the science vessel, I guess. Yeah, I mean, a science vessel's okay. I mean, obviously, but yeah, I think you're right. It, look, he's going to be developing normally, you know? Yeah. The science vessel is basically like the last piece of the puzzle for the Terran army, uh, once you have that irradiate upgrade uh, made, of course. So there are Hydras out here. I think we're going to see a big Lurker morph. Yeah. And what you generally do with this is you try to keep the Marines back. And if you can burrow, like, five, six Lurkers... Uh, you know, uh, in front of the, the Terran Natural, you have to have tanks to break out of that. Right. Okay, we've got the Mutas being chased away here. Mong's got this very forward position. I don't see the Lurkers morphing. Oh, no, I do see the Lurkers morphing. Mm. Oh, I see them. Um, and he's going to try to advance here. So Terran needs to control this platform that he's on right now, this kind of hill that he's standing on. There is an add-on on the factory on the way, so that's really, really important. If he gets pushed back, he's going to really need tanks to get out. Uh, here come the lurkers from kind of a funny angle right now. He's going to try to just slip by those marines, I think. I mean, he might be able to do it. There's a bunker here. Oh, 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 oh. Does Mong see it? Okay, he sees it. Can he get the scan off? He does, and he pulls away instead. Actually, a really good pull away. Yeah. Only drops two marines. And look at this. Oh my god, Shine trying to go forward with the mass lurker, picking everything off. He ends up getting a couple of the medics there with some help from the mutas. Now, there, it looks like siege mode is on the way, and he continues to just hunt down this bio force. He gets rid of all the medics. He's buying a lot of time. Okay, this is going to be the big, uh, the big push here. We have a second bunker. He's unloaded the marines. He's going to stim them and put them back in. The tank is not down here yet. It's coming in. Ooh, I don't know about this from Shine. I feel like Mong has enough. I, th I think he's going to be fine. The depot wall is pretty handy. Even the turrets, like, you can't quite get up to the minerals. Yeah. And he has that siege tank in the back. You can't snipe it. And he's going to have siege mode shortly. He's going to have a radiate as well. This looks very, very good for Mong right now. I, I, I think I, Shine has overplayed his hand. Yeah, I think Shine was better off being more cheesy than, than aggressive here. It just hasn't panned out. You can see the observers showing us there's only three drones mining minerals with the yeah. natural. That's what happens when you go for this crazy fast stuff. And I think it's just one drone per mineral in the main. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right about that. It's super, super low economy. Like, you're really banking on the mutas doing well. And they didn't do that well. Like, Mong built nothing but turrets nonstop. He was right. able to save the engineering bay. Uh, and then he even figured out with his scans, you know, what was going on. And he, he got into one. I thought, I was thinking about Valkyries. He was definitely right to go science stuff here. Yeah. Here we go. He's going to come in now. Uh, we still got this tank in the back. He's going to siege it up. The bunker is going to fall. Oh, he's about to lose everything. That's three siege tanks. Yeah, this he's going to try to advance. This overtaste. This. I am so sad that Shine is not going to make it through after a dominating game against Mog the first time. He will end up falling here. Mong holds off the super aggressive build here from Shine and advances to the round of 16. You love to see it, man. Props to Mong here. He did survive that. He's had a really hard day of <laughs> games. Yeah. Um, but, was... but at the end of the day, you know, you survive that all in. There is no plan B from the Muta Lurker all in there from the Zerg. Um, and so we're going to be going to an interview in a second here with Mom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good for him making it through. Uh, a little bit sad for Shine. You know, we are a little bit light on Zerg still in that next round. Uh, and I, I really was anticipating him getting through. And I think he, he showed that great form in the previous game. But this one was like, there's no looking back with that build. Because no. you just don't have the workers. Yeah. Um, well, Shine goes out. That's too bad. I'm kind of used to seeing Shine as a top, you know, 16, top 8 ASL player, but uh, I think he didn't do the right build here. I think Mong is a stable enough Terran. I guess the way that their first game went, he thought, oh, I'm just going to even, I'm going to do that, but even more. Oh, yeah, even Cause, quicker, right? Because he wrecked Mong. Yeah. Um, you know, with the first. So, I, yeah, I guess true. actually it does kind of make sense. He's like, well, and this is a good map for Mutalist Crest. It really yeah. is. There's a lot of ways you can fly around and appear at different places, but... Mong, it's like when the Terran realizes in time to make turrets non-stop, that's like the key moment. 
if they're making the turrets non-stop, it becomes really hard for Zerg to break everything. Yeah, a big push in here. Um, you know, I'm, they're showing this moment up here. I, I, there's just no way that you're ever going to get through. The depot has actually played a really nice role here. A lot of times with lurkers, you're trying to slip kind of behind the minerals and maybe start hitting the command center. Um, but there's just too much material there. There's no way to get in between. And those vessels, I got a great call here. Yeah, they were. I, I really was thinking about the vaults because of how crazy aggressive the mutas were. But the like that, I think that like really helped save them as well. Their radiates, the constant detection, all those different things. So uh, superbly done by Mong. A great hold. Let's go to that interview. We've just wrapped up Group E of the round of 24 of ASL 17. Let's have a word with our second place finisher, Mong. Congratulations. Thank you. In the pre-game interview, you were very hopeful to make it through today. This zeal, this sincere hope to succeed yielded results. You've made it to the round of 16. How do you feel? I didn't know it was this difficult to advance to the round of 16. I'm super chuffed. Well, to be honest, just making it into the round of 24 as consistently as you do is amazing in itself. Looking at your overall record, you've also left a mark on the round of 16 in ASL as well. Um, both you yourself and your fans seem moved by the fact you've advanced through once again after a long time. Not only that, you have finally beaten Shine. Hell yeah! Shine is my personal nemesis. I can never beat him. Even in the first game, I went into it saying to myself, please don't lose to, to Muras, but I did. But I realized, oh, that's just how it's going to be, and it really got to me. But then I dealt with it and uh, am feeling much better. As you said yourself, Shine managed to end the first game with Mutalisk play, which means you couldn't have not expected him to go for Mutus again in the second game. Uh, you confirmed his gas first opening, and then you dealt with it really well. What worried me about the last game is that if he had blocked my scouting effort to confirm whether it's Muta or Lurker, I would have been in hot water, but he revealed his intentions regarding, regarding Mutalisk play and uh, I won the last game without too much hassle. Still, at that point, if you had let yourself get shaken up by the first game, you surely would have lost again, but you maintained your composure uh, in um, taking care of the turrets and then dealing with lurkers as well by going up to tanks and vessel tech. And then you finally managed to break this losing streak. I'm having a hard time playing recently. Um, I go into games and seemingly forget things I already know and then keep losing in weird ways. Well, thankfully, that wasn't an issue today, and I'm uh, happy for various reasons now. Well, we're talking about TVZ right now. Uh, you yourself have mentioned, wow, it's difficult, it's, it's definitely not easy. Um, but your TVT is nothing to be sniffed at. Um, this is an opinion that keeps popping up. We were impressed by your mech play in the loser's match against Speed. Uh, what do you think about TVT? When it comes to TVT, I'm determined not to lose to anybody. As long as it's not TVZ, I'm fine. There's a huge difference. TVZ doesn't work for me. Still, you scored a victory in TVZ today. That should inspire some fear in the hearts of the Zerg players uh, already awaiting in the round of 16. I'll prepare diligently. You've overcome hardships to advance to the next round, um, and you surely have lo lots to show. But first up, we do have the group selection ceremony, which, likewise, uh, we are looking forward to seeing what you bring to the table. I've looked at the round of 16 ros uh, roster. I get this feeling I am easy prey. So I'll need to figure out how to avoid all the predators, the zergs. I'll have to think that a lot.
This is a highly anticipated group selection ceremony because so far we've had all the first and second tier players advancing through to the round of 16, um, promising to show good results. Do you have anything to say to your fans and colleagues? My fans have said, oh, I can't play to save my life, so now I can rest easy because I've done well. Still, well, thank you very much for cheering for me. I've had a lot of people help me practice this time, so many that I might not even recall all the names. Let's see. Rain, Shuttle, Mini. Mini helped me practice against Forward Gate, Hyuk, Effort, Killer. Oh no, wait, that bastard didn't help me. Killer, he just talks to me. Dude, can't play games for crying out loud. Anyway, Saxry and Sharp. We practiced a lot, so... Thanks for helping me. And uh, any words for your fans regarding your goals? The message hasn't changed. Um, I'll do my best to get my TVZ together and uh, show up. We hope to keep seeing your fervor bear fruit. Congratulations again. Thank you. And that does it for our interview with today's second place finisher, Mong. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, what a day. You know, it, I, I, we did have a little bit of an upset here. Mung actually survives. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. He technically was tier two and Shine was tier three. But, like, I, I think a lot of people would agree with us that Shine is maybe a slightly stronger player. In, in some yeah, regards. I think so. I think that's a completely fair statement. Yeah. Um, so, right now, not a lot of Zergs in the round of 16. Nope. But the Zergs that we have are really scary. Yeah, <laughs> Sulky yeah. hero in action looking very good. Um, we really have the cream of the crop here for Protosses. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we started out very Terran heavy. It's still Terran heavy here in the round of 16. We'll see what happens for the final group, but uh, some great Terrans here. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully we can get another Zerg out. It, it's too bad because, like, if Shine had made it, it'd be 4 5 5, and that's perfect, yeah. right? Instead, we have 3 6 5, which is. Not so much, but you look at this group, and it's like, yeah, sorry, Beast, you're really good, but I don't think I don't think yeah. he's gonna get out. So I think it's gonna be a very Zerg-like tournament. Yeah, we'll see what kind of rain comes in here today. And uh, Royal is definitely getting out. He's so good. You would think so. Yeah, he's really blowing me away. Barracks is deadly though. Yeah. Don't don't yeah, sleep is. on Barracks. Like he's in ASL every single season, and sometimes he makes around a 16. Not super often, but he can do it. Yeah. Um. Well, this has been fun, guys. Um, uh, we appreciate your patience. You know, we're in LA right now. Uh, I'm in Artosis' uh, hotel room uh, recording this. But uh, yeah, we're going to be back to our normal uh, schedule very soon. I'm flying back to Seoul soon. You're going to be back in Canada. Absolutely. Banging these out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, the next round is going to be great. But still very much looking forward to this group. My biggest question is what sort of shape is Rain? Because Rain in top form, I'm like, yes, he'll be at least in the finals. Like you have yeah. to, you have to have like a god to stop. It has to be like a soul key or a light, yeah. right? It's not, not even snuff. Not even snuff. Not, <laughs> yeah. Just... Well, well, that's the thing too. Is that is that when you look at the uh, the PVP that Rain has, like he's actually the guy that could beat Snow. So yeah. it's gonna be a lot of fun to see how he plays there. All right. Well, that just about does it for us, guys. Thanks again for all the help on the Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash ASL English. Anything else, tasteless? Hugs and kisses. We'll see you again soon. Bye bye.